Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another live stream. My name is Steve, and welcome to Mac84. So, Wolf, today I am going to jump back into recapping some boards. Uh, unfortunately, I, I had to uh, take a bit of a break there, but uh, I have some time today, so that's what we're going to be doing. And we got a bunch of lovely people in the chat already. I think there's like 10 or 15 of you all. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been live streaming too much, actually. The last stream I did was about, about a G4. I have been releasing scripted videos like crazy because I've gotten a new camera and it's eased up my production workflow, thankfully. So um, the third video in my vintage Macintosh um, challenge video is being edited right now. Uh, yes, I still have to clean that quadra, and I appreciate everybody giving me suggestions. Um, I know I have to be very careful with the amount of pressure I use with the Magic Eraser, but we'll get to that in a bit. But Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm having fun with them. Uh, I'm a bit frustrated, actually, with my third video right now because, um, let's put it this way, as the folks in the Mac Yak uh, group will know that um, that quadra has been giving me a bit of trouble from the software side. And um, there must be, oh, about, a conservative estimate would be about 10 to 15 hours of footage. <laughs> There's no way I'm using all of it. Uh, so I have to just take bits and pieces because I was recording and all sorts of things went wrong. And uh, yeah, so I, I sorted out all the troubles. So now we're all good but documenting and sharing what had happened and sifting through that much footage is, is the tricky part. So what I will likely do is do something like I'm doing now, sit in front of the chair, have the camera here, and sort of give an updated introduction to what you're about to see, and then just put a bunch of clips in there. Because the problem is what had happened was I shot, here's a little behind the scenes thing, I shot the cleaning video directly after I finished cleaning it, I started to test the machine. So there wasn't really a clean break because I didn't think that cleaning video was going to be so long. Little did I know I spent three to four hours in total getting the camera set up, cleaning it, and everything else. Uh, my name is Steve, but you could call me Mac84. That's totally fine with me. Um, and so I took the machine apart. I cleaned the whole thing where, as much as I could, and I'll be cleaning it more. Don't worry. Because um, <laughs> there's a lot of stains left on there. And... I, I proceeded to, to try and start the machine up, and I started small, and things looked okay, and then we ran into trouble. And so the problem was that I didn't do a clean break in the video. I just said, all right, now we're going to test, turn it on and test it. And if I would have left it, that video would have been at least an hour or, or too long uh, because of all the, the stuff that's in there. So um, it, you know, it, it's, it's kind of hard for me because I am very much used to doing, like I did with the iMac video and some of my higher, I guess, you know, scripted quality videos, uh, I ha try and have a very, um, very, you know, I try to think of the best word, but I, I try to have a very clear path of what's going on and, and, you know, the method and everything of, you know, I'm starting with this, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and I wrap it up. But this is an ongoing series type thing. There's no real clean break. It's just like, all right, well, I spent eight hours in the basement taking around this. Let me <laughs> try and piece together a video based on that. So, um, you know, I can't do reshoots. I can't go back and, and fix a line I flubbed. I can't fix my hair, which has been... I need a haircut. Um, and, you know, now I have a new pair of glasses. It's actually holding my hair in, which you'll see in the... You probably noticed in the cleaning video, some of my hair is, like, sticking out of my glasses. Whatever. Anyway, um, so, yeah, it's... it's it, it, I'm going to just use what I got. And it's, it's going to be warts and all, but you know what? Um... I told myself these were going to be vlog type videos. They weren't going to be edited as much, and it's it's trying to pull me away from editing as much. But we'll see. Um, and I got a message from eBay that I have to respond to. But let me thank everybody who's here so far because I didn't do that yet. We have Distro Hopper. We have Jay from the House of Moth, of course. We have Sad Mac. We have uh, let's see. We have Neb. And Neb is here. Uh, Ms. Neb. Neb. Yeah. See, I knew how to pronounce it when I was watching Mike's stream, and now I don't. <laughs> Nebulosity. Sorry. Uh, we have Tim. We have Trina. We have Greg. We have NK Morpheus. We have Nick. We have, uh, let's see, Bruce. We have Emerald Gaming Extra. We have Michael. We have Hot Rod and a bunch of other people. We have uh, El Nero Diablo 
if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Everyone's very creative with their usernames. Uh, and, and yes, I'll call you Ms. Neb. Thank you. <laughs> That's a little bit easier to pronounce. Sorry about that. Um, and Disho Hover just got a clamshell. Awesome. Then watching during dinner make me laugh. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> alienate everybody by making strange Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonations that don't sound like anything else. Oh, boy. Oh, this guy's really asking me to do this now. So, essentially, I, I bought something for this Quadra project, and um, I wanted to buy another just because they were so cheap. And I went to buy another, and it's going to charge me full shipping price, which is, like, more than the item. Like, two times more than the item. So I messaged the guy, and I said, um, you know, can you combine shipping? He's like, oh, yeah, just do the request total button. I'm like, there is no request total button, because I need more than two items in the cart. So going back and forth to him, explaining that, I, and showing him screenshots, and he's like, no, nah, it should be there. <laughs> Dude, it's not there. Like, I, that's why I sent you a screenshot. <sighs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, yes, I have, I have bunnies. I have five rescue bunnies, and we have a cat that was, uh, a family member's cat. So, it's a full house here. Oh, boy. Um, Nero. Okay, most Aussies call me Diablo. Both work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Has an airport card, 120 megs of RAM, and the most spec'd out machine? Oh, sorry, the chat sort of jumped there. Um... Where'd it go? There it is. Um, and the best value, $20 untested. Not bad at all. What color is it? That's the most important question. What color is that iBook? Uh, Trina says, found a tangerine iMac today. Turns out it was an orange bucket. <laughs> you thought you saw an iMac and it was an orange bucket. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Eep. Yep. <laughs> I have a much fuller house of animals. Oh, boy. I'm afraid to ask. Don't worry. I, we, we had one bunny, and then we had another, and then we just kept... Nobody wanted them, so we kept adopting more, and so on and so forth. But more people are joining. We have Macintosh Librarian, and we have... Uh, I think that was it. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, let me get on to this, because otherwise we're going to be uh, doing introductions but forever. But um, I have... I bought... So this is the story about the glasses. On December 1st, I had an eye doctor appointment. I went there, and I purchased these pairs of glasses. This pair of glasses here. One pair. And they said, um, okay, it's going to take about 10 to 15 days. And I'm like, huh, that's nice. I need a new pair of glasses now. Because if you'll remember, this arm part had completely fallen off of my other pair of glasses. So I had super glued it. And eh. So anyway, um, I went home with the prescription. And I ordered four pairs right away. Those four pairs of glasses from wherever the heck they shipped from uh, came to my house before these were ready. A few days before these are ready. So, yeah, I have like four types of glasses. No worries, Macintosh Baron. You can catch this stream later. I'm sure I'll still be streaming in like eight hours. Yeah, my insurance doesn't cover lens crafters because they're cheap. Uh, <laughs> recapping a bunny. I don't think they'd sit still for that. They'd probably just bite me and walk, run away. I have a Macintosh 512KE. Is recapping the best left to a pro? Um, I would certainly not recap a vintage Macintosh as your first machine to recap. And I would certainly go to my friend Bruce Rain, who has some excellent how-to soldering videos. We're going to put his little ad up here. And I would certainly test your soldering skills and build them over time, no matter weeks or months. Test it on something like an old broken VCR, old PC motherboard, something that you don't care about, something that's broken. Desolder, solder, things like that. Because um, the analog board is what's going to need uh, recapping on that. Probably not anything to do with the logic board itself. And that's a little bit tricky. So recapping means uh, removing the old capacitors of a item, let's say a computer logic board or whatever, and putting new capacitors on to that logic board. So you're basically removing a component and replacing the component. So it's shortened to be recapping. Four cats, one starling, two sparrows, three parrots, 50 quail, one duck, one bearded dragon, one turtle, and a partridge in a pear tree. Wow, okay. No eating in the library. <laughs> <laughs> this is just turning into a chat session. I'm gonna get nothing done today. I'm just just gonna tell you that. My goodness, my goodness. Uh, yep. I mean, some of this stuff is is very uh, hard to get by these days. These old computers and such. Got a great iMac. Been looking to get an iMac G4. Oh, G4 upgraded. I would just go get an iMac G4 or a G4 Tower. 
what people forget to think about when they upgrade the CPUs and the processors of, of these computers is the bus speed. If you're upgrading the processor, you are not upgrading the bus speed. So if your bus speed is 60 megahertz and you put a G4 in there, okay, you got a G4 with a 60 megahertz limitation on the bus. <laughs> so you're better off for just getting a new computer. I mean, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. But yes, go to Bruce's website. The banner has been up there, recapofmac.com. He has excellent articles and excellent tutorials and excellent videos about recapping these old things. Without him, I don't know what the heck I would be doing. Probably wouldn't be doing this, but... Okay, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, the, the capacitors could leak. They could just fail. Uh, and they, all, they, they regulate power, so it's not good when they do that. I can't remember. Did you do a video on a G4 over a G4 Quicksilver? Um, I did... Probably. I picked up a few Quicksilvers and MDDs, and I did uh, some just some live streams with them. Excuse me, I just had dinner, so I'm burping. Uh, oh, yeah, video card failed. Ugh, yeah. Emacs tend to do that. I'm going to put an M1 chip in my vintage Mac in the future. <laughs> yeah, just duct tape it on there. It'll work fine. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to talk about first off is you probably already saw it. If you came here, some of you saw that video before you came here. Uh, I am doing the vintage Macintosh challenge. It's sort of the same thing of what MacAC is doing. They're doing a 68K PowerPC Vintage Computer Macintosh Challenge. So essentially what they are doing is they are trying to challenge themselves, I'm trying to challenge myself, to use a vintage computer for a few days, a few weeks, or whatever. Uh, they are starting January 7th, I believe, in the MacAC podcast, which I have to get a banner for up here, uh, is every Thursday at 8 p.m. And I think uh, this week's will be the last one until a week or so. And uh, thank you. I... I I spent a little time on these graphics. Unfortunately, it's an animated GIF, so um, it's a little bit smearing, but whatever. We'll fix it later. But anyway, yeah, uh, so been doing some videos uh, for those of you who weren't aware of what I was rambling about earlier. And um, yeah, exactly. I would I would not... I, I'm very hesitant about the, the types of cleaning materials I'm using on this computer. So you could tell me to pour sulfuric acid on it, and there could be a billion comments on YouTube. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it, because this is... In the end of the day, it's my machine, not yours. So yeah, I'm not going to, uh, not going to be using that magic eraser, I don't think. But uh, hey, Core Two Quad counts for me. <laughs> uh, no, I think Bruce is going to win by picking the oldest computer. Although if I if I do say so myself, I think uh, he was inspired by my insanity. We'll just keep it that way. All right, cool. So I haven't used this microscope in a while, other than trying to fix some old iPhone cables. So this is going to be fun because uh, it's all out of focus, I'm sure, and dusty. So, nope, he, I will, I will let him announce the computer he's working on. I don't want to steal any thunder from him. He might do a video about it. But, um, yeah, so today, I do not have a Discord server, but the Mackiac crew uh, has a Discord server, which I am a part of. Now, I must say, I am really not 100%, you know, on Discord a lot. I, I don't do that too much. But um, if you guys want to join that, uh, as long as you're uh, kind and uh, kind-hearted folks, you will have a, a happy home there. And there's a lot of cool stuff that is there. Yes, it's definitely a 68K Mac. Uh, yeah, if you go to MacYak, Mac-Yak.com, and let me just see if I could put it in the chat here, because everyone is welcome to join there as long as you behave yourselves. If I could click the link fast enough. Oh, come on. There you go. That should work. Get yourself right over there. All right, cool. So, what we'd like to do... Is, yeah, my, my uh, Bluetooth on this Mac is a little weird. Um, I have just a keyboard and a mouse with it, but I am all of two feet away from the computer. And, yeah, the Bluetooth antenna is probably not good with this. Okay, you got a Mac SE 30 and working hard drive for $170. Not bad at all. All right, cool. I remember you make a throwaway joke about a one EPA flux in one of your recap streams. You need to collab with Louis Rossman so you get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what a conversion factor is on that, but um, I don't even know where my flux is, actually. This is going to be a problem. Because uh, I've been obviously working on the Quandra here. There's a bunch of crap on my desk. Oh, here's the flux. Uh, so, yeah. Um, oh, wait, before before I do this, uh, sorry, keep getting so sidetracked. I just want to show off uh, a little thing I got, which is kind of neat. So, um... Uh, let's see, where do I begin with this? Well, essentially, um, there was a, a film technology called APS, Advanced Photo System. And it was basically um, trying to be an advancement of 35mm film. And 
essentially it was a slightly smaller negative but you had options when you went to print it and basically those options were like a panorama a square and whatever you had three three options essentially they were just cropping the image they weren't doing anything too fancy but it was a, it was a gimmicky thing and my brother used to have a camera that shot in this film format and i found some of the film canisters i also found some that were not uh fully developed and what's interesting is unlike a regular roll of 35 millimeter film this had a little magnetic strip on it so the camera could talk to it and it also had four little indicators on the roll and it told you if it was not exposed yet or not used yet it told you if it was partially exposed it told you if the roll was finished but not developed and it told you if it was developed and so you know looking at a roll of film it's very easy to see what these APS or Advantix or however it was marketed with these camera companies where the state of the film is so i found some of these rolls and some of them weren't even fully developed i don't know if they're personally our family photos or whatever but uh, i needed a, a camera that could do this and i know i have my brother's camera somewhere but i went on ebay rabbit hole and uh, that's a really bad idea and i picked up this adorable little camera and this thing is really small this is a canon elf sport this is a film camera that uses aps film this is a tiny little thing. Adam, you're in luck. We're actually going to work on your board today, so stay tuned. And this is just this, I don't know, I love it. It's green. Obviously, I, I like green things. And I just realized this shop light is not on, so let me stand up and turn that on. Because it's uh, a little bit darker. Now you see me in, in full color. There we go. So this is a nice little green camera here. Very interesting design. It is so compact. I mean, just look, look at that. For a film camera, I, th I think that's pretty cool. Now, the reason it's called Sport is it is waterproof, and you have this little dial you push, and the bottom comes off here. And this is where the film goes, and then there's a battery socket here, etc. Now, um, I just have these cheapo shop LED lights I got off Amazon. Nothing expensive, I assure you. And so, what was surprising to me, though, as, you know, I guess it, it kind of happens these days, is there was a little surprise in here. So, I went to open up the film canister, and I couldn't. I'm like, why the heck can I open this? And then I realized, oh, maybe it needs a battery. So I put a battery in, and the number 14 showed up on the camera. So I was at the, the 14th exposure on the roll of film. So somebody left a roll of film in here. Now it's probably since long since expired, but uh, it has not been developed. So I've been just taking some random photos of the computers or the bunnies, uh, and I'll, I'm curious to see if any of them come out. Um, it'll be interesting to, to see for sure. Maybe I'll take a picture of, uh, of this computer board or something like that. We have... We are on exposure 18, so we got quite a few left in there. But I just want to show off this real quick. It's a very neat little camera. It came with its own little carrying case. I mean, it was under $10 shipped. How could I say no to that? It's just ridiculous. I also got some new expired uh, film, quite cheap. So um, I actually want to develop my own film. Uh, I'm not going to do the prints or anything. I just want to be able to develop the negatives and process them. Um, so another obsession for me to get into but yes Adam we are working on your computer next so that's what we're gonna bring out here and we have a lovely Macintosh classic 2 and Adam I just want to say I greatly appreciate your patience I am in the midst of testing two other classic computers before I send them back to that client and I am still working on a few Performa machines and color classics so I, I am still very much at work with a lot of this stuff it just takes a lot of time. Um, yeah, Zip Drive Pro Plus does SCSI and Parallel, but the Plus model apparently does not work on very early Macs like the Plus and the SC. It's what I've heard. I have one, I just never tested it with that. Apparently it's a little finicky with that, but yep, that's the idea behind it. Um, so yeah, uh, this is your Classic 2 Revision B logic board. And it has a bit of a smell to it, I'm not going to lie. It... Uh, is a bit stinky and I do see some corrosion around the uh, one of the uh, more important chips here but hopefully we could we could all clean that up um, so Adam since you're here and you'll save me from scrunching, scrunching around in my email to find the information what was the symptom of this computer and if you, you don't want to get into too much detail I could always just look up the message but uh, since you're here I'm going to take advantage of that I believe it had uh, either lines or a checkered pattern. I'm not going to go full RGB lighting <laughs> in the basement. No one's going to see it, and it's. I'm going to change the lighting eventually anyway because it's not ideal. But 
checkerboard video lines. Okay. Well, that is certainly a symptom of capacitor failure. So what I am doing is taking your little parts here. I'm sorry, you guys can't see this because my camera is too high. I am just simply taking out the memory, which thankfully this machine has metal clips for the sockets. And I'm taking off the battery cover because I do not want to lose these little accessories as I'm working on the board. Some of these can be a pain to get out. I've seen some people just wiggle these off very easily. I always seem to have trouble with it. It's probably because I'm doing it the wrong way. But yeah, there we go. It's supposed to be coming out. Come on, don't give me trouble right now. We're just getting started. Let me put that back down. Let me try this again. Yeah, there we go. All right, wanted to work that time. How about that? Well, I mean, you could use Compact Flash, but you need an adapter. Uh, I use this SCSI 2SD adapter, which connects a SCSI interface, whether internal or external, to an SD card. And you know what? I have a 16 gigabyte SD card that I use for some Macs. This, I'm using a very old 256 megabytes megabytes not gigabytes sd card and it works fine i have a whole system i have two systems on here two systems this is a scuzzy 2sd version 5.1 and it works perfectly for what i need all right so adam your parts are over here i'm going to put that over there so we can't lose them and the first thing we're going to do is get all these capacitors off of the board and uh actually i'm going to shut down i have this macintosh clone computer running you could probably hear the fan noise from it why isn't the video showing up? That's a little concerning. What the heck? I just want to shut down the machine and, uh, hmm. That's weird. Did I change something with my scaler? Sorry, guys. Just trying to think through this for a second. I don't like hard shutting off this machine, but. I don't know why I can't see the video. All right, well, that's something to troubleshoot later on, unfortunately. Yeah, System 6 had a limit of 2 gigabytes. System 7.5 and 7.6 had a limit of 4 gigabytes, although apparently you can have a higher limit. Ask me how I know these fun things, because I spent almost like four days working on this darn stuff. As I, as I strongly bite my tongue. Okay. All right. Get some of our stuff cleaned up here. Yes, there's a there's a help channel. You have to you have to go to like the README channel first. It's easy to sort of get your notifications mixed up. You just got to go there and uh, read the text that's there. Should be the only one you could see right now. Um, but yeah, that should help you out. All right, so I'm going to switch over to the microscope camera view here, and I'm going to have to do some adjustments because I was messing around with this when my nephew was over, and I was showing him some things. I had to adjust everything. So no worries, Trina. Uh, everyone hop in and out as you need. I mean, this is, uh, this is, uh, a live show, but you could always catch the rewind. You could always catch up as needed. Okay. <laughs> no worries. All right. So I am not used to wearing glasses and working on this thing. I can tell you that because, uh, I just am not. Okay, cool. So, Adam, this is your board under the microscope here. I just want to show off some things I am, um, uh, I noticed right away. So, and of course, the camera is upside down. So you see the exact upside down image that I see, which is not cool. So we'll adjust that. Uh, hopefully that image is pretty sharp. And uh, I think that's as good as we're going to get. So I see... Love, lovely, lovely bits here. And that's concerning because that's just nasty. 
Um, I assume you didn't clean this board, Adam, or, or I'm not sure if, if you had any attempts. It's very nice to actually have you here because I could ask you some questions. Apologies if this is more interaction than you care for, but uh, I'm going to take advantage of you being here just to ensure that I know the full history of this board. I think you did say you did try. This might just be old flux. Now, I, I, I remember, uh, I might be confusing you with another thread, but I believe you either attempted or you were going to attempt working on this machine and then you decided to contact me. Is that is that the gist of it? The EMAC is not a bad machine. Uh, some of them did have problems um, around the logic board and such, so it would not be a surprise if it's there for a reason, but it might just be someone's like, oh, this is old, I'm going to toss it. In that case, you could actually take out the logic board from it from an EMAC, uh, EMAC. You actually take out the logic board from an EMAC, ditch the CRT if it doesn't work, and you could actually plug it into a standard power supply and a standard VGA cable. It's going to require some work, but you could actually do it. So, Ah, okay. That's right, Adam. Thank you for re refreshing my memory. Okay, so... Uh, I told you I was going to be looking for my tools because I'm a professional, and I do not misplace any of my tools. This is where the laugh track goes, if this was that kind of a show. Um, I'm just looking for my my uh, tweezers here to help me out <laughs> only I would have no no not only me Bruce has probably the same thing too bunch of SCSI cables and ADB cables taking up his desk space <laughs> oh I'm, gl I'm glad YouTube was able to make such a fine informed decision about one of its when one of its creators goes live it's such an excellent excellent thing they do Oh boy, sorry guys, just uh, looking for my stuffs here, and I, uh, oh wait, 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 there's a, yeah, there's a bin there that might have the stuff there. Hold please. One of my toothbrushes, not the one I use on my teeth. Ha ha ha. Um, oh boy. I just had it. It drive me crazy. Well, I can't see the screen without my glasses, so I'm gonna have to wear my glasses. Emac from a storage unit cleanout. Yeah, they are heavy and sort of oblong. Yeah, take the battery out from the EMAC, actually, because mine did boot up with a dead battery. I don't know if that's common, but I got one uh, from a friend from an e-waste facility, and he said, yeah, I tried to turn on, it doesn't turn on. He's like, you still want it? And I almost said no, because I'm like, what the heck am I going to do with the EMAC? But it had a stand, so I'm like, yes, I will take it. And it turns out it booted up fine. I just had to remove that battery. That was before I did these live streams. Otherwise, there, there would be a record of that somewhere. Okay, here they are. Yay, found them. My goodness, this desk is a mess. Sorry about that. Okay, and I need to find... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, see, I, I really didn't prepare to do this stream because I wasn't playing on it until the last minute. So, apologies if this is all, like, meh. I mean... Be honest a lot of them are like this and you just are all very polite um <laughs> there's my scalpel okay and i just need to replace the blade on this because this blade is this the broken one yes this is the broken 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 this is the broken blade and i will show you how broken it is oops not there
Hey, you couldn't see me flail around. You were just looking at the thing under the microscope. Which is probably for the best. There's the break. Right there, you could see it. Bloken. Bloken is a word. We need a Mac 84 dictionary, which would just be the most horrendous dictionary ever. Because everything would be misspelled. And honestly, it's funny because I do writing for a living. That's one of my jobs. But, well, that is my job. Um, and you would think that I would be proficient. But when I'm in front of a camera, it just my brain stops working. So, Okay, so yeah, we're going to get rid of that old blade there. And I'm just going to get a fresh one from my drawer. Oh, I have, to, I, did, I have to set this up. I have to do the... Um, I have to do the picture in picture. I don't know why that stopped working. Oh, I know why. Because my webcam changed. Uh, let's see. There we go. Hi. Okay. Now, which one of these drawers did I put those blades in? The, the random things I have in my drawer. Like little apple cards. About Mac OS 8 temporary tattoos. I mean, all stuff that any technician should have in their drawers. I have some props for my videos, like the little iMac Yum button, which I'll be wearing in a future video. I don't think I ever. I think I showed these off for once, but I'll, we're already sidetracked. So if I didn't show off these buttons, just do it quickly. Ask me about the new iMac. Ask me about airport. Nice. I have one of those somewhere. This was at one of the uh, New York Macworlds that they had in the early 2000s. <laughs> if they turn permanent, they probably did. Probably burn my skin. Ask me about iBook. I just love the Tangerine iBook there. And then iMovie puts you in the director's chair. Yeah, new iMac. Got like three videos on that thing. Go knock yourself out. All right, here we are. <laughs> Also in my drawer. <laughs> and yes, I paid 75 cents for that. <laughs> That's the actual price I paid for this. I don't know how big this is. It's probably like 16 megabytes, 32 megabytes, something like that. Silicon Tech ATA flash storage. The good old days of the computer festivals. All right, let's put a new blade on this scalpel. Mike is sending me videos of his cats, but I am currently streaming. Maybe he doesn't know I'm streaming. That would be awkward. That would be awkward, Mike. Dana, why don't you go tell him? <laughs> Nobody saw that, but I threw a, a, a flimsy piece of paper all the way into the trash receptacle, and it made it there perfectly. Let's see if I remember how to put this thing on. I think it only goes one way. <laughs> That's the sharp bit, Steven. Don't touch the sharp end. Yeah, there we go. I didn't hurt myself. Good. Throw the old blade away. In fact, I'm going to get that trash can closer to me. And this is why my videos sometimes go for eight hours. Yes, that is a Tiger DVD. Yes, it is broken and scratched to hell. That came with that G4. Uh, I don't think this is going to work anytime soon. Okay, all right, down to, down to serious business now. Toothpaste. Okay, I don't know what that was about, but okay. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, I remember going to uh, an Apple store in California uh, ages ago, and uh, there, there, this is, I think, <laughs> I'd love to see his cats. I just, I'm just a little busy right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to turn on Do Not Disturb about my watch because I'm being blown up on Facebook and stuff. It's really funny because when I start streaming, then people decide to contact me. Uh, it, which is fine. It's just... It, you know, it, Anyway, um, where was I? Oh, yes, so I picked up a stack of those, like, Apple Kling sticker things back, gosh, mid-90s, early 2000s, something like that. Guy, we were at a store, and a guy just gave us a bunch of them, and uh, I have no idea where they are. I have, a, I have a few. I'm sure my father has a bunch, but... Okay, all right, all right, all right. Let's get back to this here. So uh, what I'm just doing is taking a quick look around the logic board here just to see if I see anything suspicious besides what we have already seen. Uh, what, what is that? Oh, yes, yes, the old uh, Xbox scratching the discs. Funny story about that, I got, uh, I think it was like one of the Call of Duty games, the Xbox, like literally the week after it came out. It was at Goodwill. And I realized why, because it had a huge circular scratch on it. I don't know what I did with that. I don't know if I brought it back to the Goodwill or what. I think I tried to trade it on the game at a GameStop or a game store, and the guy was like, yeah, this is broken. Oh, look, there's an ant. <laughs> Adam, did you spill the sugary drink on this at some point? Because we have a fallen comrade here. At least I hope that's an ant. <laughs> yeah, that's, um... <laughs> debug it oh my goodness here we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get you out of there sorry buddy um no vacancy you just missed the ant trina maybe you saw the ant there was a dead ant on the board we just pulled off yeah this this board needs a good cleaning anyway uh we are going to uh oh my goodness we're gonna try our best to um get a bunch of the crud off the get the capacitors off and then honestly we may have to uh this might be one of those boards where i want to get the caps off and put in the ultrasonic cleaner before i recap it no mike i was just saying that uh you sent me some uh photos or videos of your kitties and i i cannot give them the full attention they deserve and that they demand because i i am currently uh engaged in a uh in a stream <laughs> on your netbook my goodness don't let that that intel atom burn a hole in your leg sorry i realized that the uh focus here is not 100 percent lined up let me try and fix that there okay no no don't apologize mike i i just made a silly comment and then instead of me reaching for my phone and being you know, not lazy. I just said, hey, Dana, could you just tell Mike that I'm streaming? <laughs> Greetings, programs. He fights for the users. Mac 84 fights for the users. I don't know what impression I'm doing there, but I sound like I'm drunk. Okay. Um, yeah, there's uh, a good amount of liquid on here. I, I honestly can't tell what it is. You know, I'd, I'd almost say it's corrosion, but, I mean, uh, like, um, capacitor leakage, but it's all under the chips here. Yeah, I mean, I guess it, I guess that is capacitor leakage, because I'm seeing a bunch of sticky stuff all over the place, so it, it very well could be that. Uh, it's just a little peculiar, peculiar because I, I've not seen it this bad in a while, so. All right, um, just looking to see if there are any traces that are jumping out to me. Uh, away from the, excuse me, away from the capacitors, but um, <laughs> I'm too important to be sidetracked by true. Yes, please, please tell my uh, servant that I, I am way too important to be sidetracked by your your cat videos. So if you would uh, please pay attention to my stream, which is the most important, uh, we could uh, have your day resume to its normal schedule. Thank you. Okay, so. Yeah, there's there's a bit of corrosion here. Definitely some delicious cap juice. <laughs> Dana, I know he is better than I. <laughs> oh my goodness, Mike, putting words in my mouth. I'm putting words in my mouth. 
<laughs> I need to do the entire stream in a snooty voice. Well, if you know anything, Dana, you will know that when I try and do an impression, it unfortunately just morphs itself into another voice. And I have no control over that because I'm just terrible with my impressions. <laughs> See, that's what happens. And then we lose all the viewers, and Adam promptly decides that he wants his board back because it's obviously in the hands of a maniac. <laughs> What's a mic? <laughs> yes, usually an angry German with the stomach virus. <laughs> Guten Tag. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'm just I'm just cleaning up a few of these areas here. I mean, not really cleaning them because it's going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm just checking to see if there are any clear signs of anything too bad here. So far, the traces look okay. Just a lot of cap juice and old gunk that's all around these components here. A lunatic. Thank you. There is a difference. <laughs> no, it's not your fault, Adam. Don't know. <laughs> Look, the, you can't control the how the board is and the capacitors and all this stuff. I've seen worse. Let me let me tell you. I've seen much worse. Um, I was just curious if, if you knew like any history of it. If was it you know, uh, you know, was it outside of a computer for a while? Because the ant was interesting. I've never seen a an ant on a board before. Um, so maybe he got hungry and you know went inside of the computer and decided, hey, this is not what I like, and then perished. But you know that's. That's what happens. I assume this was never serviced by anyone else, but um, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna set up our primitive metal shield thingies here to try and protect the plastic of the boards as we get the old caps off. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. In the original box, stored in an attic for 12 years. Well, those ants, uh, or that ant rather, I've only seen one, so I can't assume it's it's too many. But uh, those ants are adventurous. How about that? Jeez. Well, that's the thing. These these capacitors leak. There's there's nothing you can do about it. Um, you know, you get them off as soon as you can. But what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, just so. We can see the best picture we can here. And swim! Sink or swim! Um, <laughs> this is not what I like that he perished. I'm an excellent storyteller, as you can tell. And this blade has a bunch of garbage on it. Um, and so we're just going to get some of those capacitors off. I am such a dork, I actually put, um, you know tools and flux and stuff on my Christmas list. I actually have to explain what that stuff is because it's like, no, I'm not making anything crazy. This is stuff I use for my live streams. I did not know that, Dana. I knew it stood for something with Wozniak in it because I know the IWM is the integrated Wozniak machine, but very good. Super Woz! Sander Wozniak or Super Wozniak? I thought it was Super Wozniak. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, um, I'm getting ahead of myself here because I thought that was something else for a minute. I'm just going crazy. That's all. It's just, it's just you know, been stuck in the house since February. This is what happens. All right, so I'm just getting some solder here to uh, just prime the iron here. I'm not going to use the iron just yet. I am going to use this heat gun to get a bunch of these components off. So, no worries, Adam. Take your time. We're going to be here for a while. All right, so uh, I'm going to turn the heat gun on. You're going to probably hear a lot of noise, so apologies. Uh, and we're going to try and get some of these capacitors off. Yeah, you know what? Those Radio Shack ones, that's how I learned to solder. And I will tell you, I did not know what I was doing. I really didn't. I didn't use flux. I didn't tin the the tip of the iron or anything like that and night and day once you learn that stuff because it's like oh my goodness 
I can actually do stuff now, and, you know, the, the solder goes where I want it to go most of the time. How about that? Now, I uh, will warn you, Adam, that, uh, you know, as it says on the terms of my website, uh, I am the, the most careful as I can be with the plastics on these machines, but, um, you know, since there is a lot of high heat around this area, unfortunately, sometimes you get a little bit of melting uh, or a little bit of uh, things like that. But I will do my best to keep this board protected, uh, especially around the battery holder. And this area here is the worst because you have two plastic pieces and a capacitor right sandwiched there in the middle. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. What has a... What, who, who? I owe somebody an eep? Oh, well, Danny gets an eep anyway. Eep! There you go. So... Yeah, just a fair warning. I know you probably read the, the lengthy terms and conditions I have on the website. Just wanted to let you know. I am I take all precautions I can, but I am not uh, a miracle worker. And uh, when there is heat next to plastic, sometimes it tends to melt. And I don't like that any more than anybody else does, but there's really nothing I could do about it. Okay, so we're going to... We're going to take the problem capacitor off first. Now, unfortunately, I might have to do this away from the, the microscope camera just because at the angle it is on. Um, so I will be doing that now. Well, I'm glad you had good success with it. Hopefully, I do too. Oof. Well, that just popped and singed the fingers, my uh, hair on my fingers, right there. And you could see, you could see that, and then uh, the capacitor is still smoking over here. Oh, that smells disgusting. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, these are all going to be poppers, I could, I could tell. <laughs> yep, that's, that's, that's what I'm these boards are the worst for that, you know, I find. But, uh, yeah, this, look at that. Oof. <laughs> My goodness, thank you very much, Mike. Eep! Thank you very much for your super chat. Greatly appreciate it. Um, I would strongly suggest that all of you, all of you, go and check out Mike's Mac Shack. Mike has an excellent channel. He actually just streamed and if it wasn't for his channel and pressuring me to stream today, I wouldn't have streamed. So please go to Mike's Mac Shack, check it out, subscribe. He does a lot of cool Mac stuff, a lot of cool PC stuff too. And uh, yeah, excellent, excellent channel. And I hope that uh, he could reach his 1,000 subscriber milestone very soon because he has a very cool giveaway. Won't well, give away the details, but very cool giveaway that he's going to be doing soon. Okay, so uh, da -da -da -da. Ba -ba -do, just catching up on the chat. You have a hum coming through. That is the that yeah that hum is is the the heat gun. So I can either mute the microphone or I can continue working here. But there's nothing I can do about that. And now it went off because it has to cool down. But that hum is the vibration of the desk with the microphone. So sorry, that's you're just gonna have to deal with that for the time being. It's like you're in my house. All right. Um, yeah, let's continue. Hopefully these won't all be poppers, but uh, where are my protective glasses? <laughs> I had uh, protective glasses at one point. Oh, well, this is going to be fun either way. Mm -hmm. 
right. Oh, these are smelling. My goodness, get to the chopper. No, nah, I can't do it. Dana does it much better than I could. Now, I'm gonna do this one off camera. It's just a little bit uh, harder for me to actually, actually focus on. Let me see if I have another one of those metal clip things. Now, let's use one of these guys. I've bent this one so much already. Do it now! Put the cookie down! I guess it's that time of year for that one. Alright, let's see if we can do this one. Who's your daddy and what does he do? Uh, I remember those those anim those uh, flash shockwave uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger soundboards. Whoa, there it goes. Uh, those those my goodness, back in the day, use the heck out of those. Blasting caps right off the board. Make sure it doesn't hit you in the eye. Move that trash can closer. <laughs> it's not the doll, it's a turbo man. <laughs> I've just been rewatching some Aqua Team Hunger Force. Great show. Okay, yeah, I know the camera's a little bit out of focus, but I'm just trying to get these caps off here. <laughs> and the events of that uh, happened in real time there, Frylock. <laughs> oh my goodness. I could say a lot more quotes from that show, but I not 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 on the stream right now. I, I do and try and, and keep a uh, fairly kid-friendly rating because uh, some of my biggest fans are my nieces and nephews. <laughs> it's fog it. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. Let's try with this happy bunch of capacitors here. I have never touched an Atari ST, unfortunately. I hear there are awesome computers. A friend of mine, Brian, I believe, picked one up from the same e-waste facility that I picked up a bunch of my computers from. Or maybe it was similar to uh, one of those, but um, I have never personally played with one. Yeah, it's quite fishy. I'm very glad you sent this one to me, Adam, because it, it, it is looking like it's going to require some extensive cleaning. So... So that is definitely something that I'm well suited to do.
Oh, nice. I always love to see the videos from those arcade conventions and stuff. I just can never go. Oh, boy. Where's your extractor? I got my little fan. It's been blowing this whole time, but I don't, I don't got one of those fume extractors. Maybe Santa will bring me one. Now I turn the fan on like maximum overdrive. Maximum overdrive. What were, what were we saying maximum of on the Mac Yak stream? I kept. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just kept like, to the max. <laughs> Silly things like that. Uh, yeah, well, that was, those are the capacitors they, they uh, used at the time. So, what are you going to do? I mean, this thing lasted, what, 30 years? I mean, come on. Come on. It's not, well, these aren't fresh fish. These aren't fresh fish. Funny story about fish smell. I uh, came back from a uh, international flight. AirPods to the max. Taste the music. Um, <laughs> ride the walrus. Um, we came back from an international flight years ago. And... Uh, it was the smell of fish in customs coming back in the U.S. I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. And sure enough, when eventually we got through the customs line, uh, there was a woman sitting next to her bag, and the bag was being inspected by a very unhappy-looking agent of the airport, the security agent, and uh, it was very obvious there was some very gnarly-smelling fish in the bag. And the woman was being questioned, and she kept saying, No, I do not have any food in that bag. Well, it didn't take a genius to figure out that she was lying because of the smell that was horrendous. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, just, I keep thinking of that every once in a while. I'm like, how could, how, how much, you know, how, how, how brazen do you have to be to just be like, No, there's, there's, there's no fish in the bag. What are you talking about? <laughs> Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I don't think these... And you know, We, we discuss it, and Bruce and I talk about it, and, and the MacAc team talks about it a lot. I don't think anybody has imagined that anybody would be crazy enough to use these, these machines uh, for so long after you know, they, they were released. I, I think part of it, though, has to do with the software, because... If you look at the Windows side of things, yeah, you went from DOS to Windows and stuff like that, but it was generally easier to virtualize or emulate those type of old systems and games and stuff than it is on a Macintosh, because you have the very early Mac stuff, you have 68K stuff, you have System 6, 7, 8, you have PowerPC stuff, and you have the Intel stuff, now you got the M1 stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a bit difficult. I mean... I'm not saying that Windows stuff is a cakewalk, but you'd be surprised. Some games you could just pop in, they're from like Windows 98 or Windows XP. And they'll work. You know, you might need a patch for them, but you know, don't need too much. Yeah, these machines were designed to last exactly when the warranty ended. <laughs> That's all Apple cared about. It's going to work till then? Alright, good. Ship it. Ship it. Not gonna jinx it, but these well, I, I just jinxed it again. These capacitors aren't uh, aren't too bad this side of the board. So far, so far. I once had a guy at the Apple Store try and sell me Apple Care, even though I already had Apple Care and it was about to expire. And my response to him was, "Sure, I'll buy more Apple Care." And then he went to look it up in the system. And he's like, "Oh, you already have it." I'm like, "Exactly." Because I was having so many problems with that MacBook. It was one of the first generation Intel ones. Just a Core Duo MacBook. Not even a Core 2 Duo. It was a black one. It was nice. But um, had a lot of problems with that machine. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had people question me like... Where'd you get that food, sir? Where'd you get that water? I'm like, uh, over there. You want the receipt of the overpriced uh, meal that I have in my hand? Because here's the here's the nine dollar, um, you know, chickpea salad burrito that I bought, that tastes like garbage. 
and gave me a stomach ache. Do you want the receipt for that? Because here it is. <laughs> I'm like, okay, sir. You can move along. Oh, this one's always fun. I hate doing this one. This one's gonna pop. I know it is. I know it is. See, when I know it's gonna pop, then I then I get like a I'm gonna scream like a little girl when it does, because it's like ah, it's the thing. It popped it as soon as it went in the trash bin. <laughs> I was lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. All right, we got uh, one capacitor left on the board, and this is another one that is surrounded by plastic. Always fun to do. <laughs> That's awesome, Adam. <laughs> uh, I'm sure if you go back to my other live streams, you, you will hear said girly scream. I'm not saying I'm proud of it. I'm just saying that's my honest reaction. So I'm like, ah, it's a thing. It popped. Loud noise. Break this off. It's about to break off anyway. Right. Very hard to do something when you have the... Uh, heat gun in your other hand there. Let's try and get this one off. Whoop. That one, that one just let out some, uh, Steam. All right. Oof. All right, Adam. All of those nasty capacitors are off of the logic board. Yay! Yay! Let's see how how's everything looking. Too bad, honestly. Oops. Bye bye, stink cans. See you later. I'm sorry. The, the chat is just going by real quick tonight, so I apologize if I if I'm not uh, reading a comment or, or catching up. Uh, you can just use the at symbol Mac84 if you want my attention. You can always uh, super chat or super sticker me if you want. You don't have to do that, obviously, but I guarantee you get my attention. Um, I'm not seeing any uh, bad traces. Right off the bat here, I am seeing some uh, little bits and pieces of junk right here. That ant was probably carrying some stuff around that we're going to find on the board, no doubt. That crafty little ant. And there was not rejoicing, and the people of the village were happy, because the evil capacitors had disappeared from the land that they held so dear. Okay, so... Yeah, and see, this is, this is like the melted plastic that... I can do nothing to prevent because it is so close to there. You just got the. It's just. It's not. It's just. It's under that port. You can't even. You can't even really see it. Oh, there's some green on this pin here. Oh my goodness. My goodness. Yeah, it's not focusing because uh, I'm not really in that area. But that. Uh, yeah. The see. The accents always. Always. Uh, always morph halfway through. I have no control over that. There's something in my brain that makes it do that. And that's just what happens. Yeah, well this is going to go through the cleaner anyway. Oh, we have a solder ball there too. 
Isn't that nice? We have a little happy solder ball here. Hey, Jay. I found your solder ball. He's not watching. He's not watching. Now he's going to hop in the chat. I was here the whole time. Okay. Um, I have my alcohol here. I have to go get... Um, that is the ADB port. Um... We'll, we'll clean that up. When, once that goes to the ultrasonic cleaner, that shouldn't be a problem. Thankfully, I do have S-Video ports, Adam. So if, you know, obviously it won't look stock, but if for some reason this port is damaged and it will not work, I do have replacement jacks I could put on there. Again, it won't look stock, but it would function. So, <laughs> Mike is extremely aware of his phrasing. That is exactly why he said it like that, I assure you. And if we look at the modem port there, my goodness, we got uh, we got some fun there too, Adam. Mm. Yeah, so there is some lovely corrosion. Yeah. So it's probably a good idea that this thing wasn't uh, booted up with or anything like that because... Uh, might have short-circuited something. Uh, also, by the sound, we have a, there's a hint of green on the pin all the way in the middle of the screen right now. So yeah, this is going to be a fun one. It, they're never simple recaps. They they really never are. Um, but hopefully, the ultrasonic cleaner takes care of most of that, and we get on with our lives. But uh, I have um, it's not trash. Uh, I am on. Uh, what, what am I? What am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? No, it's not the battery that was leaking. Just the humidity, Adam. You know, stuff like that <clears throat> could cause corrosion. I'm sure everyone in the chat can clue you in on that. I'm gonna run upstairs, grab a glass of water, and I'm gonna get some Q-tips uh, to clean this board with because I ran out the other day. So I'm gonna put on the hold screen. You could groove to the hold music. I will be back in a matter of minutes. Alrighty, I have returned, and so has the Macintosh Librarian. We have synced our schedules. I know, I know, uh, I know that was very difficult for you to do. Oh, come on, watch the language here. Okay, so, do, 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 do. let's catch it up on the chat here. No, this is not your board. This is Adam's board. Um, although, um, it does remind me of your board because uh, it has a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, nasty goo in some of the areas. I think your board, uh, uh, Kate, I think the issue may be with the chip that is located in this region here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a spare for that. So I'd have to pull it from a working machine to see if that theory is correct. 
Um, but maybe I would get around to doing that uh, sometime soon, or if anybody has a broken board that is just horribly trashed, because I have, I'm just looking over here, I just saw that, one second, let me confirm this here. Ugh. Yeah, I have, I have a Macintosh Classic 1 board that is toast, but this is a Classic 2 board, uses a different chip. But, uh, no, 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 your, your board, I think, can be saved. I think it is only that one chip that is being problematic. Um, so that is, that is definitely in the, in the pile of, you know, that, that is, that is definitely in the pile of, of products to be worked on in the future, don't worry. There you go. I mean, we might, we might be able to get one working board out of the both of them, Kate, so it's completely up to you. But uh, I am happy to take a look at it. I have sort of put the brakes on public recapping requests because I was just getting flooded. And uh, Adam, I greatly appreciate your patience because it did take me a while to get to you. But, uh, you know, obviously these boards take a lot of time. They're not simple uh, burb. They're not simple uh, recapping jobs most of the time. Sometimes they involve trace repair and uh, stuff like that. So greatly appreciate everyone being patient. But I do enjoy doing them. I do like resurrecting these machines and getting them to work again. I get a personal satisfaction out of it. And of course I do get bummed out when they don't work because it's more work for me and it's more stressful because we're trying to find out what the heck the problem is. Because old machines like this could be a number of things. Hey Brandon, welcome to the chat. Yes, oh, the, yeah, the trace repair on your Macintosh 2 was probably the most elaborate one that I've worked on to date. Um, but uh, we were successful with that, and we, the Royal We, you know, I was, I was successful in fixing that up. I am very, very glad we got it working. Again, I apologize for how long that took. I know you sent that to me months ago, and I still have your other projects to work on. Um, that sound chip is just giving me, giving me the hardest time. But... Um, you know, these, a lot of these projects, as I was saying just earlier, um, unfortunately are not so simple to diagnose and repair. I would love if, you know, I had a magic wand just be like, oh yeah, that's this, that's this trace on this side of the board, layer three, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that skilled. And I am going to actually just dump a little bit of this alcohol on here and start scrubbing with a toothbrush because... We got some gnarly stuff going on here. We got some solder balls right here. You can probably see. Well, you can't see, but solder balls. Fun, fun, fun. Just trying to get all that gunk where the old uh, capacitors were. Try and get most of that away. Obviously, we will be doing an ultrasonic cleaning on this board, but trying to get the majority of that stuff away so I could put down new capacitors without worrying about any issues there. Hey, Neo, welcome to the chat. Ashton got a 3D6 is in bad shape. Ooh, failed, fried it trace wise. Oof. We like tinkering. Well, I'm glad. Uh, I, I, if you cannot fix that machine, hopefully you can get someone to fix it for you, because it, it does stink when you find a cool machine and there's something wrong with it. I mean, I've been fairly lucky. Uh, most of my Macs that, that I really cared about have avoided severe damage. And I say most of them. There's some more solder balls there. I say most of them because, unfortunately, the Quadra A, uh, 840AV I have uh, is not currently working. And I had a, what was it, a 475 or 476 LC, one, something like that, um, where the battery exploded on it. Uh, thankfully, knock wood, I think those are the only two casualties in my collection. But it still stings. I like the brushing ASMR. <laughs> That's my new channel, Mac84 ASMR. My goodness. Okay, so... <clears throat> Alright, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the soldering iron and I'm going to take the desoldering wick here. And yeah, some of them are very creepy. Um, when I did the video, what was it, two years ago? Two Aprils ago? 
Uh, I just did that as a little bit of a gag. I thought that was fun. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, but I, I agree. It's sort of kind of weird. I mean, the whole aspect of just, like, recording noises is interesting. But then you get into that sort of creepy, I guess, a culture or a group of folks that are doing it for very specific purposes, which is kind of weird. But, I mean, you do you guys. I mean, this is my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, mouth noises, like chewing gum and eating and stuff like that. No thanks. No thank you. No thank you. So we're taking the old solder off the pads here. I should have put some flux on there first. You know, I'm actually going to uh, clean this up a little bit. I'm just going to put some solder on the edge of the iron here. Yeah, just get all that gunk off of those pads completely. More ASMR. I'll give you the, the Quadra 800 fan ASMR. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Just a fan. Uh, thank you, Ed Retrotech. Appreciate it. Got uh, 35 people watching. Thank you to every single one of you. I appreciate you watching. I always love having an audience to do this with because it gets kind of boring doing like the same machines over and over again if you're not talking to anybody. Or if you're talking to yourself, then you just feel a little crazy. So, yeah. It's always it's sort of how it goes. Just get a Power Mac G5. I have a Power Mac G5. I have several actually. So I just got a new one. I wasn't even I wasn't even I wasn't even planning on ever getting another Power Mac G5 again. And then someone said, "You want this? It's free. Or I'm going to throw it out." I'm like, uh -huh. "I guess. <laughs> I guess." <laughs> Sorry, honey. Sorry. Well, you know what? When I started, believe it or not, I had no subscribers. I had none. They all start the same way. I actually didn't start doing Macs. I started doing video game stuff, and that market was saturated. So I got even less subscribers. I think I have like a thousand. No, maybe I have like I, think I have like a thousand subscribers on that old channel somewhere. But you know, I didn't really do much on there. It was a lot of effort. And I got really discouraged because I worked so hard on doing a video and then someone, some big YouTuber released a very similar topic video um, like a week or so before I was set to release mine. And I'm like, well, they covered exactly what I was going to cover and with the fancier camera, so nuts to that. And I'm like, well, let me focus on something I don't have to do as much research on because I'm already a dork about it. I mean, I was a dork about video games, but I'm even a bigger dork about Max, so... Yeah, I get the Classic 2s and Bruce gets the SE 30s. I still have an SE 30 from my friend Brandon that I have to uh, try and get working and have my own SE 30 also from Brandon that I have to try and get working. So, a lot of Macs to be fixed. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's a personal preference type thing. I honestly, believe it or not, I used to hate public speaking. I used to hate getting in front of a camera. I used to be extremely self-conscious about myself, still am, and I, if you would have told me that I would have 4,000 subscribers and I'd do a live stream and let's say 70 to 100 people sometimes would watch me live or whatever like that, I'd say, you're out of your mind, I would never do that. But here we are. Just trying to clean up some of these pads here. Uh, some of this will be uh, probably off camera a little bit. It's just easier to go from bit to bit.
just helping me agitate that old solder and then I could use a solder wick to get that off. Just paying careful attention to where my tip is. I don't want to melt any plastic or anything like that. Do you have Sega? Do you do Sega stuff to you? I actually just did a video. Um, it's not for my channel, but a friend of, not really a friend, an acquaintance on YouTube uh, released a video about Sega's arcades in Japan closing, and I made a comment on their video, and we got to talking, and um, they said, uh, oh, by the way, on Twitter, they were like, oh, by the way, not just to me, but in general, uh, if anybody, uh, you know, has any memories of, like, this Sega thing, let me know. And I contacted them and say, well, you know, the deadline was today, but I'm doing this on this. Would you like to, uh, you know, comment, uh, you know, do a little video or something? They said, sure. And it was about this Sega Saturn, which I grew up with. I was lucky enough to get one discounted uh, as a Christmas gift. And um, I recorded a little, I don't know how much they're going to use. I sort of rambled on for 15 minutes, as I tend to do. Uh, a little small YouTuber, you know, not, not only a... a 1500 subscribers something like that uh, but the, you know what that that's something I could talk about um, but I, I grew up primarily with Sega systems we had an Atari 2600 a Sega Genesis and my brother had a Game Gear and that was it for a while and then we got the 32X got the Sega Saturn got the Sega Dreamcast and then uh, somewhere after the Saturn we got the Nintendo 64 and then my other brother got a uh, Sony PlayStation then we got the Xbox. So, you know, actually it was, it was very, 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 very fortunate because, um, you know, my brothers would save up their birthday money or money from jobs or whatever, and they would get the system that they wanted, and obviously we all lived in the same house, so uh, I had the ability to play it, you know, so very, very fortunate there. I know, uh, you know, those consoles were silly expensive, and so were the games. They were like $70, $80 back in the, the 90s, which was obviously a lot. Still is. But uh, we also had, uh, I also remember getting a, a Sega CD at a flea market. Uh, must have been, yeah, I, I, I really think it was $5. Did not have any of the cords or anything, but uh, I somehow managed to figure out and hook it up without uh, a manual or anything. I actually called the Sega 1-800 number that was on the back of the system. And the guy was the nicest dude ever, and he was like, oh yeah, here's how you plug it in, blah, 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 blah. And um, got that system working, and I, I, that's a, a fun system. I don't have a lot of games for it, but Sonic CD was one of, my, one of my favorite titles. So, I'm just rambling now. Ah, uh, that's uh, Pokemon Stadium 2, that was fun. Yeah, I wish Sega did more. It's Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Um, let's see, da, 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 da. Commodore VIC-20, Intellivision, nice, Sega Dino, Dreamcast 2, great consoles, yep, Atari 2600 Junior, have that one somewhere. Yeah, you know what, it's funny, the Dreamcasts were like dirt cheap a while ago, now they're like getting more expensive, I think I have three consoles, I have a, a Sega black one, the uh, sports one, it uh, has a black case, and then I have uh, a, uh, you know, the cream, white colored console, and I think I have another one that a friend of mine gave me. And I think I may have one more. I may have sold it, because you know, even I have my limits of collecting. Um, I think I think I had one more, but I'm not not entirely sure. So yeah, sorry for the ramble. Uh, we're just chatting here, but I'm cleaning up these pads. I use the desoldering wick to get all of the old solder off of these pads, so they will be more accepting and clean to get uh, their new capacitors installed be very nice and I'm just gonna do the same on this side when I'm done with this I'm gonna go over because there's some solder balls here I'm gonna go over with the toothbrush again try and get um, everything cleaned up uh, so when we put those solder those new capacitors on hopefully we can do a test I'm still waiting for the next ColecoVision there you go I have my 2600 AV modded very cool <laughs> That's interesting. You have your limits to collecting. Try telling someone that who doesn't know you. <laughs> yeah, try telling my wife that too. I don't think she would agree.
Yeah, I, I see there are a bunch of those um, those little uh, emulator things you could put in them, to, you know, to emulate a, a, a the GD ROM disk drive and read from a USB stick. I, I'm super interested in that. I just, you know, I I have not had the time to uh, spend on that. But uh, there are some video game console things I would like to feature on the channel. I know the name of the channel is Mac84, but basically I do technology stuff on this channel. And I couldn't think of a better name than Mac84, so that's what I went with. But uh, there are some video game things and video game related things that I do want to cover on the channel. So that is something that uh, you will likely see at some point, either in a live stream or in a scripted video of some sort. Uh, I have a Sega Game Gear with a cool TV tuner adapter. Um, I have a Nintendo 3DS that I got, which had a cool TV tuner adapter that I got in Japan. And I kind of learned a lot about it, and I don't think anyone really did a video about that, so I was planning on doing that, and then I sort of got sidetracked, but... Because um, I got a lot of footage of TV while I was in Japan. Uh, you know, just holding the camera up to the Nintendo so you could actually see how it functions. But obviously, copyright issues and this and that, who knows if that would have been a problem. But uh, I am, you know, I grew up playing video games and messing around with computers, so it is of interest to me, and I would assume that a lot of you are also interested in that kind of stuff, because it's sort of, sort of in the same ballpark. And let me clip this here. Oh, da, 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 da. G4 that refused to boot OS 9, but it was the DMG version that booted right up. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, okay. Turbo Graphics. I've heard about them. I played one once. I, I don't have one, though. Yes, I have a, I have a RetroPie set up. I do have a 3DS. Um, I do not have a Fitbit. Uh... I do have a Switch. That's probably the newest console I have. Hello, David. Welcome to the chat. And check out David Stahl's channel. He has a lot of great content, and um, you know, I know, I know he's he's itching for those new subscribers. So please check out David's channel, David Stahl here in the chat. Please check out his channel. He has some excellent content there. And I'm using a microphone I won from one of his contests, and. Uh, I don't think I ever really gave you too much of a proper shout out, David. And if, if I'm misremembering on that, which I hope I am, uh, but if I'm not, I apologize. And I, I do want to give you uh, proper props for that. It was very nice of you to do a contest, and I was very, very thankful to win. And no, it was not rigged, Jay. Of course, we could pick on Jay because he's not here. And, um, you know, he came, he disliked the video, and he left. But um, there you go. Macintosh Librarian sub today. Picked up a Japanese 3DS, uh, DS rather. Certain Pokemon games in Japan won't work on U.S. systems. Interesting. Did not know that. AirPods are overrated. I, it, yeah, it, that's why the there's the crazy emoticon there. Right? I mean, honestly, the um, the uh, AirPods look interesting. I've never bought one. I don't need a pair of right now. I mean, look, if someone gave me a pair, I'd use them probably. But uh, I have a pair of Beats headphones that I won from a contest at work. It was one of those raffle giveaway dealies. That's what's wrong. This micro microscope is slightly tilted. There we go. And uh, so I use those, and they work kind of like AirPods. They connect to the iPhone, all that junk. So yeah, I'd say, yeah. I mean, it's, let's not talk about Apple's pricing. What they mark things up 400%. That's just what they do. So any, anybody who's like, oh my God, they're expensive. I mean, you, this is Apple we're talking about. We've been doing this since the 80s, man. Since before that. <laughs> I mean, this is this in their DNA. They're going to charge 300, 400% of what it costs to make it. And then there's the Apple tax they put on top of that. I mean, this is why I don't buy anything really that's new. I mean, the most new thing I'd probably buy is maybe an iPad and an iPhone. Uh, or maybe a cheap M1 or M2 or whatever Mac Mini down the road, but goodness. Yeah, I mean, AirPods are popular everywhere. I, I see them everywhere, and, and that's cool that you guys have them. I, I'm, I'm not saying you can't have them. You buy what the heck you want to buy. I, I don't care. Like I said, if someone gave me a pair, I'd probably use them. But I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to go and, and spend like 
the money that Apple wants me to, to spend on like the AirPods Max or whatever the heck they come out with. Well, like, no, that's not for me. I'll check. I'll stick with my uh, cheapo headphones. That when I sit on them or I break them or whatever, I could go out and buy a replacement without you know going into debt. <laughs> so to be as clear as possible. I'm sure they sound good. I'm not saying they don't. I, just, you know, I, I would rather spend money and, and on other things. but And people would likely not spend the money I spend on, on other things. So there you go. Everyone has their own thing. There you go. Your 8600 system, seven grand back in the day. And that was a screamer of a system. Thank goodness. Get some of these solder balls out of the way here. Jay, stop leaving your solder balls over. I'm just gonna keep doing this because I know he's not here. And then someone's gonna message him in the in our Mac Yak chat and go, you know, Steve's talking stuff about you. You better go see what's going on. Then he's gonna show up. Look at that solder ball. Look at that. Yeah, I have uh, I have a pair of Sennheiser or however you pronounce them uh, wired headphones that are good. I have this uh, Xbox headset made by uh, oh what's the brand of it? Uh, Pole Folk or something like that. Very fancy looking one, new in the box. Same dump I got the G3 all in one from, sitting in the box, brand freaking new. Uh, it, ha it it has a an adapter so you could just use it on a computer or an MP3 player or whatever, even though it's for an Xbox. And so I'm using that right now upstairs when I edit my videos. I just put the headphones on. And, ooh, look at that. Look at that scunge or whatever it's called. Um, I mean, I just, I just use, I, and honestly, I, I, I move between pairs. It's not like I'm like, oh my god, these are the best. No, I, I you know, if the beats aren't charged, I'll use something else. Um, I usually use the beats on the iPhone because I don't have a headphone jack on that machine, so that device rather. So. Welcome to Steve's audio channel. Let's see what my uh, crummy ears hear that I think nobody else could hear. What's that? I can't hear anything? Yes. Yeah, Either my vision's poor or this thing is not focused correctly. Probably both. Probably both. And my my back is starting to ache a little bit. It's uh, not too bad, though. But uh, when I was doing this like every other day, man. And then I know Bruce has had a similar problem. It just creeps up on you. No, I'm not. I'm, it's not hurting that bit. I'm just saying I, I kind of feel it, you know, because you're sort of bending your neck in a weird position. And my posture is not the best right now. Well, I mean, when is it? But also I've been working from home, so I'm like obviously sitting in front of a computer eight hours a day. And then this. So. Yeah, I had someone contact me. This is a funny story, kind of. Maybe just a rant. I had a, uh, I had a funny, <laughs> Grudy, send that darn iPod out, jeez Louise, making us all look bad. No, it's not fixed yet, Jay, we didn't put new caps on it. What was I going to say? Um, uh, yeah, no worry, I'll, I'll take a break if it's really bad, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad now. But, um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Uh, Jay's going to be Jay. Can't stop him. Um, that's right. Somebody contact me, uh, contacted me because I have that Teespring store where I have shirts and junk like that. Uh, someone contacted me. and like, oh, you should do a shirt uh, with this on it. You know, you know, I get ideas all the time and suggestions from fans and stuff. And it's awesome. I, I really like, you know, nine times out of ten people contact me. They're very kind. They're not pushy. They they are asking a question, or they're generally curious about something. And if I don't know the answer, I will more than likely find the time to respond to them and go, "Look, uh, I can't troubleshoot with this issue, or uh, I'm not familiar with the machine you're talking about, or this or that." And I'll point them in the right direction. They're usually very happy that I took the time to do so. Once in a while, you'll just get some folks that think that the you know they the world owes them. <laughs> and this guy, you know, was proposing a shirt idea, and then he, he kind of made a joke as like, okay, you could send me one, and I'm like, haha, you know, like yeah, okay, and uh, you know, I'm not, I wasn't gonna make the shirt really, it was just an idea, 
And then, uh, I, I don't know if he was joking or not, but I got the sense he wasn't, or they weren't, you know. And it was just like, oh, can you, here's my address, can you send me that shirt? And I'm like, buddy, I, I didn't make the shirt, and uh, I don't just go giving out free shirts. I don't have, like, a stack of them at my house. This is through a third-party company. I don't make much money on this. You know, I put up a shirt for sale that's like 20, 25 bucks or whatever. I get a few dollars off the top. I'm not, I'm not getting these shirts for free, man. <laughs> this company's making the shirts. They're printing this. Uh, you know, it's just like, you yeah, make me a free logo, man. Oh, God, yeah, my days as a graphic artist. They're plagued with story from those. You know how to do it. You can do it quick. Yeah, because I've spent 20 years learning how to do it. But, uh... Yeah, so it was, I just, you know, ignore, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, communicate with somebody like that, I just ignored them. And then I, I get people who are spamming my chat here on YouTube, and uh, I'll block them, and then they'll find me on Twitter or Facebook and go, could you unblock me, I'm sorry. I'm like, dude, no. I'm sorry, you can't follow the rules. There's an FAQ in every live stream I do, there's a link in the video description, and in that FAQ it says the rules for the chat. And such like that. And if you don't want to follow the rules, you want to be a jerk or whatever, I'm sorry. But I have <laughs> all the right to mute you. And, uh, you know, that's, you don't be toxic. Oh my goodness, look at all this juice. Look at all this cap juice under here. Disgusting. Disgusting. You could die from exposure. <laughs> oh, boy. I would obviously prefer there be no dislikes on my video. Um, but Jay is going to be Jay. And this is why we can't have nice things. Isn't it? Of course it is. Of course it is. Alright, so back to what I was doing. I'm just cleaning up some of these chips. There is some obvious signs of some goo under there. So just putting some 99% alcohol here and just scrubbing away. Obviously, we will get this under an ultrasonic cleaner. I just would like to try and test it after I recap it, but I'm, I'm obviously a little worried with the amount of capacitor juice that is conductive that is around these chips here. So just full disclosure there. I never read those rules. <laughs> uh, love is a strong word love is a strong word put up with um, is a good phrase um, tolerate is another good word <laughs> he knows I'm kidding <laughs> he better know I'm kidding oh my goodness Go, go relax and clean up puck for 40 minutes. I will say, if you ever, ever think that you have the cleanest Macintosh Apple puck mouse there is, you got to check out Jay's video about cleaning the puck mouse. I mean, my goodness. It's it very thorough. I will tell you that. Extremely thorough. And I'm sorry that some of the text is coming off there on this chip. Um... More of it's going to come off in the ultrasonic cleaner. That's just how this stuff works, unfortunately. But uh, I enjoy seeing little Mackie's face in the chat. Yep, there he is. He's a celebrity. He was very expensive to get on Mac Yak, I tell you. His agent is, is an excellent person. They just took us for all we're worth. He had to get a producer credit. You know, he's just... I think the fame has gone to his head a little bit. He needs a new firmware update, I think. Connect to. I'm 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 streaming here. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not in front of a computer with IRC and all that stuff. Sorry. Maybe when I'm messing around with the computer one day, I'm I'm working on a, a board here. I generally am not really on a lot of chats. I'm not. I'm not that much of a social butterfly here. Uh, I have my little Twitter thing. I have my Instagram. I got my YouTube's. I'm in the MacYak Discord. This is about it. I don't like a handle. I mean, IRC is cool and stuff. I'm, uh, 
think. I used to be on it a lot, but the server I was on went down ages ago. Yeah, I actually, uh, spoiler alert, um, the Quadra 800 I'm working on, I got IRC to work on that. If you saw my Twitter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, enough cleaning up this area here. Let me just work on this area to here, this side here, and we will get fresh capacitors on there. How about that? That, that chat room name is a little suspicious. I don't know if I want to be involved in that. <laughs> oh, goodness. here <laughs> Mike is like this is boring I'm gonna go watch another video <laughs> oh boy <laughs> no blue M&Ms <laughs> There could be someone living in the basement. I wouldn't know. <laughs> you know what, Mike? That is that is true. That is very true. I'm just going to go in the corner and cry my capacitors out. Don't mind me. I'm not sad. I'm just upset. I was about to do an impersonation of Mackie, but A, my voice doesn't go that high, or not reliably and B um, I think it would just scare away all the children so we're not going to do that okay yeah there's a, there's a good amount of uh, gunk on this board let me just put some more alcohol on here and just try and swab that away and then the caps go on well I'm glad it's not boring to you <laughs> Okay. And da, 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 da. Yes, I remember reading about that too. Yeah, I love working on boards. Boards are fun. This is fun. Well, I'm glad everyone is entertained. You have been entertained! Alright, so let's uh, attempt to find the bag of capacitors that I put on the table behind me. Ah. And there was a very handy guide from a very good friend of mine who is Bruce. And Bruce has these excellent recapping guides which I'm about to follow and I printed them out. Oh boy, I do a Mackie impression. I, I I can't I can't do it. I'll get a cease and desist. I don't want that. Oh, excellent. <clears throat> Yes, Bruce. Bruce is my father from across the across the world. That's I, I don't know the logistics of how that could have happened, but uh, me thinks not. <laughs> the resemblance is uncanny. Bruce is far too young for that too. Uh, yeah, copyright strike. Exactly. All right, so I have my appropriately uh, printed out system guides folder here. <laughs> yeah, a little spine on it and everything. <laughs> something like that 
All right, so this is a Macintosh Classic 2 Revision B because it has the two ROM sockets here. There's a little bunny bookmark my wife gave me, which is, I always forget is in there. And so here is the schematic, uh, no, the schematic, the diagram. And uh, the right side is cut off because my printer decided to stop printing half the way through. Well, quarter, uh, a, a sixth of the way through. <laughs> If you want to get fancy with fractions here and uh, yeah so we're gonna take that out so we remember what we're doing put this back over here it's somewhat organized here Mackie loves them games <clears throat> and take a drink of water here for a second <laughs> um, I am certainly not as organized as I would like to be. Just ask the people in my family. Okay, um, what was I doing? That's right, recapping. All right, so we got this guide here. I'm going to position it over here so I can look at it as I get all the capacitors out of my capacitor bag. Yay! Oh, boy. I really need a better system to organize this, but here's what it is. All right, 47 microfarads. We only need three on this? My goodness, only three? Only three. All right, those are the bigger ones. Those are easy to identify. Let's get it over there. No worries. See you later. Oh my goodness, I didn't even realize it was 11 already. I've been going for almost two hours. Pick up the pace, Steven. Pick up the pace. That's why people wonder why these streams are so long. I'm just going at the pace that I go at. So, sorry. Uh, probably have to order some more capacitors soon, unfortunately. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. These are... I have a lot of 6.3 volt capacitors. Interesting selection, Steven. Ah. Are those I'll just take out the ones one by one because otherwise I'm never going to be able to find it uh, 6.3 volts again really Seeing some empty bags. I hope I have all the capacitors. If not, I'll have to order some. Those are for the Apple IIe card. Jeez. All right, well, I know I certainly have more capacitors. Uh, there's a possibility I could have left them on my desk. More 4.7s. <sighs> That's a very odd question. Are you like trying to invade my house? Please don't. Put the rest of these in here. It's like, is your the house with this color on it? Because I'm outside. Can you let me in? No. I'm calling the police. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think this is the doorknob YouTube channel. I think you have the wrong channel. <laughs> oh my goodness. Where are the rest of these caps? This is going to drive me mad. Oh, see you, Trina. Good night. Didn't uh, see you there. Just made an inventory of my components. Yeah, I made an inventory of my caps and then I started using them. So I didn't update my inventory since. Uh, let me just take a look at this table over here. They might be on there. Fifty-one. 
Okay, and they were over there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Woo, that is a close one, Adam. We got exactly 12 of the 10 microfarad 16 volt capacitors. Uh, they are the bigger ones, though. I usually like using the smaller ones. They're much easier to put on. Maybe they're still over there in the pile. And we have the uh, we have the uh, 50 volt ones, too. Uh, let me go check here. Just give me a moment, guys. Just checking around see if I have those over here. Yep, I found an empty bag of the smaller capacitors, so I think I use those all up. Yeah, it's just one of these things you buy like hundreds of them, and you go, ah, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I'll have plenty of them. And honestly, I, I thought I had uh, enough when I did this, when I started the work tonight. But uh, I guess not. I mean, I, I could technically use the uh, larger ones. Uh, it's not too bad. This board is not too bad to use those. Uh, so I just will end up doing that. Uh, I will order, order the smaller ones when I can. But uh, we should have enough to finish this board at least. Uh, at least give it a uh, the old try. All right, so, and the, the size, the physical size of the capacitors in this case does not um, have anything to do with their function. Uh, they just make them in different sizes. And I just sometimes prefer to use the smaller ones because it's easier on some boards. Um, on this board, it's a, it'll make it a little bit more difficult, but uh, it's not a huge problem. So uh, what I'm gonna do first is do the two oddball sizes here. These are the two 150 volt one microfarad capacitors. And let me switch back to the microscope view so you can actually see what I'm looking at. Are we quoting episode one now? Misa, Jaja Binks. Jeez. That's a bit scary. That's a bit scary. Okay, we got uh, one that goes here. And the other 50 volt goes there. So we're gonna be putting two down. Yeah, there's there's different sizes that I ordered depending on the project, and uh, I obviously prefer to use those, so I ran out of those quicker than uh, I normally do because I, I used a lot more. But that's okay. That's all right. You know that's that's why we we uh, can order more capacitors, and I actually should do that because uh, I got a bunch more I have to order. Probably the graphics card. That would be my guess. Or the uh, processor. Apple's requirements seldom make any sense, so sort of have to guess. Ah, I sort of lost grip of that. Hold on. Let's try that again. with the capacitor being so large it is a bit difficult to get it between the pads where it has to be it can be done it's not impossible it just requires a bit more work and uh, the tip I have in my iron is a little bit large uh, I will likely be swip it, swapping that out uh, in a moment because it'll make this job easier especially uh, when I have to go between some of the uh, capacitors here to complete that job. So let me just do a wiggle test here. Okay, that is good. I'm going to turn the iron off for a second. 
I'm going to switch to those that smaller tip I have for the iron. Okay, where is, um, what was I looking for? Jeez, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, that's right, soldering tips. Where did I put those? See, the problem is I cleaned up my desk to put the quadra on there and just sort of moved everything to the side, which you should not do. You should put things where they belong and organize them, etc., etc. And, uh, hey, look, a blown reefer cap. Kaboom. I just saw them too, because I'm like, oh, that's where they are. I think I moved them over here. Where did they go? I just saw the darn things. I picked them up and I'm like, oh, here they are. Um. 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 Take some of these CDs out that might be hiding something. Oh, here's a bag of capacitors. 25 volt, 6.8 microfarad. Interesting combination here. Here's more. Oh, uh, that's a. Uh, oh, oh, I do have. Uh, these are. Okay, I could use these. Good. These are some of the smaller. Uh, ones. I don't think I have all of them. It's, if, if you don't mind a mismatch of capacitors, Adam, as long as it works, I assume you don't mind. Because um, we have eight of the smaller 16-volt uh, capacitors that I used on uh, uh, for a different project. Wait, I crossed them out. Is this actually what they are? I'll have to double-check before I use this. Um, let's see. Let's, uh, let's see, where, where did those iron tips go? Because I really would prefer not to be working with such a large soldering iron tip on such a small work surface area thingy. I would really prefer not to. Ah, he stand up again. Sorry, folks. Where could they be? Here's a little Mackie guy. Hey. Oh, thank you very much, Greg. I greatly appreciate that. You have a very cute little uh, super chat sticker there. So I have to give you an eep. Eep. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your support, Greg. And uh, I'm sure all of you are subscribed to Greg's channel because he has an excellent YouTube channel. But subscribe to Rook K Mods if you are not already subscribed. He has some excellent content there. And he mods the heck out of a lot of systems. Which is very entertaining for me because I have none of the risk of breaking anything but all of the pleasure of watching them. So. Oh, boy. Sorry guys, this is going to take me a bit. I have no idea where the heck they are. I, I just saw them. I was not planning on doing a recapping stream, so that's why I really, really wasn't... Okay, are they in here? Are in these drawers here? Ah, let me check. I can find a bag of busted PRAM batteries, but ugh. 
can't find the uh, soldering tips I wanted. Oh, come on, they had to be around here somewhere. Uh, how are you guys doing today? found the other box of capacitors I have. These are all larger ones, I believe. These are the radial ones. Oh, is this, of course, now I find the smaller 50 volt one microfiber, but that's all right. Uh, boy. I know this is embarrassing. I mean, you're probably not embarrassed. You probably don't mind, but I'm embarrassed because I don't know where I put the darn thing. So I was cleaning up here. I know it doesn't look like I cleaned up. I was cleaning up and I thought I had them. I really thought I did. They were in a small little clear thing, so they they're easy to misplace, unfortunately. Nope. Oh, you know what? They could they could be under something. Hold on. For that. It could also be behind something. Dang. <laughs> you guys are keeping yourself uh, occupied in the chat. That's good. <sighs> Let me just check behind the camera here. There might be, might be something over there. I found a Raspberry Pi. I think this is the one without the wireless chip on it, unfortunately. I could always use more with the ones with the wireless chip on them. Any, any of you have a Raspberry Pi? They're very, very fun little uh, things to tinker with. You do a number of things with them. Still looking, guys. I apologize, but uh, well, what do you guys use your Raspberry Pis for? I use mine as uh, makeshift uh, webcams for places like uh, the front of my house, etc. I mean, there's a million uses for those things. They're so cheap. You could get them for often, more often than not, the wireless 
you know, the uh, zero models, it costs more for the power supply than it does the device itself. I'm still here. I'm just looking over here. Oh, I found him. Yay. I knew I just put something on top of it. So that's that's the, the problem. I found them. Sorry that uh, this was so boring. Oh, boy. At least the, uh, at least my soldering iron tip has uh, cooled down. So that's good. Why isn't my webcam working anymore? What the heck? What happened? Did I click something? Did I click something? Hold please. Web camera. No, I don't want that. Did I unplug the camera? Ah, oh, the camera got unplugged. Good thing I wasn't streaming on that thing. Uh, it's a miracle I get anything done, is it? Wait, that's the audio cable. What am I pulling? It's been a long night, guys. It's been a long night. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. This is what I was looking for. And I wrote good tips on there. Because I have another set that just disintegrate. They're horrible. So I had to had to note that these are a little bit different. Uh, I prefer raspberry pies. Ha 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 ha. Mm, I can go for a good apple pie right now. Apple pie. Okay. Use the smaller tip here, and of course. Of course, if it's not one thing I lost, it's the other. Great job, Steven. Uh, just use these. The idea is to always have a heck of a lot of duplicates of tools. So when you lose one, you have another. <laughs> the alternative is to be organized and actually put your things away, but the fun in that. I'm just using the tools because things might still be hot. Well, I doubt they are after that time frame. And I'll have one of those fancy soldering irons like Bruce does, where he can just swip the, swap the uh, tips without burning himself. Which is a very, very nice feature. Y'all see Peter's new mustache? I almost shaved my mustache off by mistake the other day. <laughs> Believe it or not, there is some maintenance going on here. Not a lot, but I think the, the bare minimum to use the word maintenance with. <laughs> I had it on the wrong setting. I went, Zzz. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is a little too close there. <laughs> yeah, Dana does much better uh, silly voices and impressions than I do. And when uh, right before we're about to do Mac Yak or if we're just chatting on Skype or whatever, it's excellent. It's very, it's very fun for us at least. I know. Okay. So <laughs> oh boy, we're getting nowhere fast. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> Sorry. He's like, that's why this guy took forever with this thing. He's just sitting in the basement making voices half the time. Sometimes, only sometimes. Okay. So let's get our other capacitor in place. So this is the other 50 volt one microfarad capacitor. 
we're going to switch back to the thing so you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. Sorry for that uh, that uh, waste of time there, but we found what we were looking for, so it's all good. Okay, get the recapping guide out here. Got a little fancy like. Okay, excellent. That's going to need more solder. Oh boy. Sometimes my hands aren't steady and it makes this a little bit more difficult. Sure that's not a wobbly one it is not okay good <laughs> oh good night thanks for stopping by <laughs> you sent the messages okay god that'll be a treat to listen to later my goodness so long. i gotta I, I gotta speed this up okay so we got uh, much more to do here so let's start with this little guy here no, i did not clean that pad fully off shame on me we will get to that now. Oh, it's one of those disappearing messages. Now I got Now I gotta get it from my phone. And now, now everyone, see, this is what happens with my phone. I press the the home button on that. I never respond to that eBay message. Oops. Uh, all right. Let me, let me hear this first before I play it publicly. this speaker so it's it's kind of hard to hear but let's try yeah it, it's it's uh my phone's weird anyway i tried okay oh i didn't keep the thing that's the whole point of see i can't multitask <laughs> bruce <laughs> you sold me out <laughs> Steve talking trash about you. <laughs> I see what your guys is doing. I don't like it. All right, back to this repair. You know, all day Jay is just like, "Who's streaming? Who's streaming? Who's streaming? Who's streaming?" Anybody streaming today? And then you finally stream, and he dislikes a video, and then he goes off and spends time with his family. I mean, the nerve of that guy. Thank the maker. This oil bath is gonna feel so good. Okay, that was would be out of context for anybody who has no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, so time to use some of those uh, larger capacitors here. <laughs> that Bruce one, he looks innocent, but uh, you know he's he's got them evil eyes. You uh, you watch out for him. He's got the he's got the mice. I didn't say nothing, but he's got the mice. All right, so let's try and do these ones here. So I'm just putting flux on there, and then I am going to put some solder on the iron. 
and try and get this capacitor into its proper place. And I want to test this machine tonight. I want to try and plug it in, see if we uh, have any uh, different results. Again, not nearly enough solder on that tip. Ed Retrotech, that's an excellent question. I have absolutely no idea. Bruce, do you have an idea? And that did not stick, did it? See, that's a problem when these capacitors are a little bit too big for where they're supposed to go. You can easily get into a spot. That's why I like to do my little wiggle test. You can easily get into a spot where it's not touching one of the legs, or one of the pads, rather. Bruce is Brankus Creations. That's why he has to be fancy and have his channel name and not, you know, his actual name. I mean, we just call him Bruce because, you know, he doesn't pay us enough to call him by his stage name the whole time. But We got a little bit of an extra thingy hanging off there. We can get rid of that. Where did my flux go? There it is. That uh, um, yeah, brightness uh, wick. Words are hard. Go. <clears throat> All right. So let's do a few of these over here. Same type. These are uh, 10 microfarad, 16 volts. He says as he glances at his repair guide, just to be sure. This word's going to get a little bit tricky because they are very close together. But we are going to do our best. And yes, we will straighten those out. Okay. <laughs> oh, I need to watch more Star Trek Next Generation. I, I, I've seen the whole series, but I, I would not mind watching that show again. It was one of those things. My cousin Brian is a huge Star Trek fan. And he's a bit younger than I am, but grown up. Uh, he would always talk to me about the show, and I, I was a nerd. I was all obsessed with Star Wars, and I never really, I never gave Star Trek a chance. Honestly, I just never did. Either it was never on, or I never cared to watch it, or whatever the heck the reason was. And a few years ago, I just, you know, it was all on Netflix. I'm like, you know what, let me, one of my coworkers was talking about it. I'm like, you know what, let me give it a, a try. Oh my goodness, what I was missing out on all these years. Probably one of the best television series I have ever watch. I mean, not every episode is perfect, but uh, heck of a lot of fun. I cannot hold the tweezers like that. I gotta hold them like this, Steven. These tweezers are bent, which doesn't help either.
Okay, these are going to be fun. I could already tell. <laughs> Do yourself a favor. I've watched. I, I, I'm not going to talk at length to the plot points or anything, but I, for a casual Star Trek fan, I, I enjoyed some bits of the Picard show. I'm not going to say anything much. That there were some cameos from the older shows that I, I enjoyed. In that, that you know, it was like okay, it was okay. It's not my favorite. I have no intention of rewatching that series or whatever. Uh, I don't know if I'll I'll watch the second one because it was one of those things you had to pay. You know, at least here in the U.S., you had to pay to watch it, and I was like, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's like a few dollars a month, and that was the only show I had any interest at all. I don't watch it. I was like, yes, yeah, that's all right. And I'll, I'll wait till the you know the next season concludes, and I'll sign up for maybe a month binge watch it and then be like nope bye <laughs> I, I know I know Dana has very different opinions than I do on that but I'm not saying it was great or anything I, I enjoyed a uh, you know a few episodes I, it was, was alright I, I disagree with some things obviously you know, I know Dana does too but uh... that doesn't mean you can't like it that doesn't mean you can't have a different opinion than mine that's just my opinion all right, wiggle test. These are all seem to be on in the correct orientation. Awesome. <clears throat> I have not watched that yet, Mike, and I want to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, at Retrotech, I usually just replace them with like capacitors. Obviously, there is some tolerance there, so you know, you want to replace with something else, you're you're welcome to do so. But yeah. You get uh, you have some problems, I guess. <laughs> I'm not. I didn't say it was. I didn't say it was good. I said I. I enjoyed some of the. Well, I don't know what I said. I have no memory. It's. it's you're welcome to your own opinion. I. Like I said, I'm not I'm not a, a big enough fan to have any strong feelings one way or another. I'm like, yeah, that was alright. I probably just have have <laughs> a very high tolerance. After all, I enjoy Independence Day and uh, Godzilla, the 1998 American film. <laughs> and when I mean I know I mean enjoy, I mean I understand those are very flawed films. <laughs> My goodness. What the heck are we talking about? Anyway, yeah, let's get these capacitors on the board. I actually liked the Sonic movie. That was the last movie I saw in theaters. Obviously, I was not the target audience. Uh, I was a big dork, and I decided to go see it. I was pleasantly surprised. It was not the dumpster fire. Everyone was saying it. It would be. And... Um, It was. It, it's a kiddie movie. It's enjoyable. Uh, I would. I would not be opposed to watching that again with my niece and nephew if they wanted to watch it, etc. But uh, you know, I was like, eh, what movies are out? That's the only one I'm vaguely interested in. And the movie theaters are going to be shutting down soon, so might as well get that in my system. I'm glad I did.
Okay, the next one is a 47 microfarad capacitor, so let's make sure we don't screw that up. Got to get the right one in the right spot. Sorry that this is sort of slow going and boring. Hopefully, we will get to a point where we could test this board very soon. I'm just as curious as you are if it's going to work without some deep cleaning here. Uh, unfortunately, if I were to guess, based on some of the gunk that was in between some of these chips and such, I would say this board may not cooperate without a good ultrasonic cleaning and some scrubbing, but uh, it would just be a guess at this point. Mike, <laughs> I am twelve. <laughs> you know what? I I did I did I did think it was a lot of fun. And if they make it, it sounds like they're making a sequel. I wish them the best of luck. It looks like they really had a, a hard time starting out that project, and it was very nice to actually see. Obviously, with the thing, the way the world is right now, that was like one of the only films that was out. So it got a lot more money than I think they they would have made. But, uh, <laughs> good for them. Alright, so we're going to put two more of the 47 microfarad capacitors on here. Again, these are very interesting spots because there's a lot of plastic by them, so you have to be extra careful. Mike, I have the Star Trek laser discs too. My uh, father-in-law has a whole collection of the Next Generation on VHS. The whole collection. Uh, so what I hate doing because there's so much plastic. I'm going to do this off camera very carefully because I have to get close to it. Okay. That went okay. Now, I have to do the one between the two there, and then I'm going to do this one next. This is the one right by the ADB port. I'm going to scrape away the gunk on that port. <laughs> that is true. Um, just before we uh, put a cap there, because it's going to make it more difficult for us to get to there. Oh, gosh. I mean, some of this will come out when it goes through the ultrasonic cleaner, but... I have the ability to just go here right now and try and clean this away. I'm just going to try and get in there and do that. And thankfully these caps, this cap will actually be low profile enough that I should not have to worry about putting a new one there. And where did the, uh, where did the other cap go? Did I only take three out? Or two out? I'm supposed to take, th there it is. It's, it's just hiding on the piece of wood here. Okay. 
Oh, nice. Working laser disc player. My kind of people. Oh, uh, yeah. It's... I. You know what? My aunt uh, just went through a cleaning spree and got rid of all her Disney VHS tapes and stuff, which I was kind of... I was like, no, wait, because there were some that, you know, you remember the commercials when you were watching them when you grew up, and there were there were one or two things that I would have liked to say, but whatever. Um, where was the story going? Uh, but she had some stuff that was taped off a of TV that I thankfully, you know, I after I heard that, I went and cleaned out. So I have, I have a bunch of VHS tapes now that were recorded off a of TV well before I was born, and uh, probably a lot of good commercials and stuff like that on there, so that would be cool to see. I mean, granted, it's a box of probably 100 plus tapes that I won't get to look at anytime soon, but. I just didn't want to have them be thrown out, you know? Then again, I have my own videotapes I have to go through. <laughs> Alright, this one's going to be fun. This is right. Again, I have to do this off camera because I have to go directly down to avoid melting anything. bit more solder there, I think. Make sure that capacitor is not going to go anywhere. There we go. Alright, so the rest are these 10 microfarad capacitors. 16 volts. So let's get those on. We're going to clean this one up right by the battery terminal just a little bit. There's a bit of... Uh, old solder there. Nothing too bad, but just want to get rid of that. I don't want to have to redo any of this work. That's why you do the job first correctly. No shortcuts here. What is Snake Mountain? Mass of the Universe toy. Oh, okay. Sounds fancy. Oh, man. I, I remember. I'm just going down memory lane now. Sorry, guys. You're going to come with me. Uh, I remember being so excited. One of my brothers got um, the uh, Millennium Falcon. Star Wars toy. This is the 1995 toy, not the older one. Uh, and had like the electronic sounds and the lights. My goodness, we played the heck out of that thing. And you could move the cover and there was like a little chess table they sit at, or Sabak, or no wait, Sabak is a card game, not the chess game. Anyway, there was the chess game, you know, and uh, a little table and you had the action figures and they, they fit in the seats and oh, it was really cool. I think I still have that somewhere. Of course I do. I never throw anything away because I have a problem. So the first step to resolving the problem is admitting you have a problem. Yeah, I have I have a fairly new ATAT. -AT. It is sitting in the garage. It was like a reissue, but they had like the you know the, the 80s style box. It has sound effects. It's really cool. Unfortunately, it's sitting in the garage because I just I don't have a spot for it inside right now. But um, when uh, my brother's kids are of a, a bit older and they have more delicate hands, I'm bringing it out. That'll be might be fun to play with. All right, three, four, five more capacitors to go. Let's do this, guys. Let's do this. All right. All right, let's do the most painful ones first because those are annoying. And uh, we'll do the one right by this expansion slot, which Apple never released anything for, but uh, some guy on eBay made his own FPU expansion, I believe. Not that it's cheap or anything, but you know, it does exist. 
I think it's like $70 or something like that. Again, I have to move this to the side so my iron could go straight down and I could avoid melting any plastic. Yep, it's good. I also noticed there's some corrosion on this pin here. You kind of see some green. Oh, that stinks. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I got work tomorrow too, buddy. Although I don't have to drive anywhere. I am very fortunate I do not have to. But still. Oh, come on. Yes, there we go. I'll redo that again. That was a bit messy. This one here, again, straight down. This is going to be even tighter than the other one. I can't even put that much solder on the tip because it's going to melt that plastic, and I don't want it to do that. So. I think I got that one. Jeez. That is like the, the worst one out of the one of the worst ones here. Because it is right up again. I mean look how little room there is there. Jeez. Okay. Well, we'll try and keep you entertained, Mike. We got three more to go. And awake, I should say. Oh, come on. Why did you do that? Go back over there. Thirty-one people still watching. My goodness. Well, don't worry. We'll try and uh, 
Test this out here in a few minutes. Alright, we have one more to go. just a bit of crud here. I don't know what that was, but we don't want anything bridging any of these pins together. It's a piece of plastic or something. Well, you also have to think of the ratio, Mike. Uh, I have nearly 4,000 subscribers, and I got 30 people. You have uh, nearly 500, and you had 15 people or so. So, really, that increases you do the math and um, not not that different honestly it all depends on what people want to watch I probably have a lot more subscribers that don't care for the live stuff and they want to see more of the scripted stuff it seems that way based on the analytics those videos are much shorter to watch also so I don't blame them not many people are gonna stick around or, or watch a recap that is three hours long or, or you know watch the resulting video of that they're gonna be like yeah some people do, which is, which I find very amazing. But uh, <laughs> thanks, Jay. So so nice of you to put that spin on it. At least my numbers are better than your live stream numbers. Oh. There's just some extra flux and junk here. I'm just going to clean up these areas really quick. And it's on to testing. <laughs> These J's are realist. So you're saying not not just not just uh, <laughs> you're saying that that we wouldn't we wouldn't show up when it's usually the three of us, at least three of us there. Ah, uh, Dane has been doing stuff. He has been. So I'm just using a fan just to uh, dry some of the alcohol off here. Uh, then I'm just going to double check my work. As you always double check your work. Make sure you put the capacitors in the right orientation. Make sure everything is actually connected. So we're going to do that now. So. Positive, positive. Not moving. Good. Positive. 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 That's what the stripe is pointing to. Positive. 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 
positive, positive. Uh, where's the positive? Positive. 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 All right. And now uh, 10 microfarad, 10 microfarad, 10. 10, 10, 50, 50, 47, 10, 10, 47, 10, 10, 10, 47, 10, 10. Okay. Looks good to me. Okay. So, what I'm going to be doing is switching away from the microscope view and we're going to get a Macintosh Classic body on the desk here so we could test to see if uh, we've successfully resolved the issues that this machine had which was a uh, checkerboard pattern. It is very very possible that there could be more issues with this board especially with the condition that we have uh, seen some of those chips in. It is also very possible that this needs a good cleaning before it wants to work. But uh, Adam, if you are still here, <clears throat> this is the moment you've been waiting three hours for. Oh boy, oh, I got to stretch. My goodness. Oh, okay. Okay, so whoops. So uh, this is a Performa 200, aka a uh, Macintosh Classic 2. This board is of uh, a different client uh, who was in the chat earlier, and uh, they would not mind me using the case, I'm sure. But their board is already recapped, uh, so I'm going to test this board. Now I am going to grab the uh, memory modules that. Adam sent in for this board. These look to be one megabyte each, I think. Well, we'll find out. Adam is here. He's still here. Good. Yeah, the lights dim in the neighborhood when that happens. So first, I'm just going to do a quick power on test just to make sure things are functioning. If they are not, uh, we will probably have to save a lot of our diagnosis uh, for another stream. I'm using a simple ATX extender cable here, just so I don't have to put that board entirely in the machine. It just makes that a little bit easier for me to troubleshoot. I have not touched the ROMs, but they are in the proper orientation. Make sure there's nothing missing. Nope, looks good. So I'm gonna turn this machine this way. keyboard out of the way there move the camera here so you get a better view of what's going on again this is a wide angle camera so unfortunately I can't help with some of these things um, the speaker that's right this doesn't need a speaker it has the all the, the information it needs through there and we got our power cable so place your bets guys <sighs> place your bets you think this is gonna work I sure hope so I sure hope so Fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen. Fingers crossed. Um, I'm going to just stand up here because my knees are bothering me. And we're going to make sure this is off. Yep. I'm going to plug this in and give it a go. All right. Three, two, one. All right. No chime. I did hear the CRT engage. Yep. Yeah, we got some stripes there. Would not surprise me if those are caused by some gunk under those chips, especially this chip here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try cleaning a little bit by that chip and try again. 
And if that doesn't work, then this will need to go into the cleaner. But you originally had a checkerboard pattern, is that correct? Nope, that analog board works fine, because I've tested it. That is not his machine, that's a, a known working machine. But uh, unless I am mistaken, I believe that... Uh, oh, well, thank you very much, Jay. I know you give me a lot of crap, but I know you don't mean it most of the time. Ah. So I give you a eep. Thank you very much, my friend. Let's see if we could uh, find exactly what's going on here. Now, interesting enough, Kate's board had the same issue. And... After scrubbing this chip, it had a different symptom, so it would be a bad idea to check. But I believe Adam said he was getting a checker bar pattern, and now we have the jail bar pattern. So slightly different. All right, so let's take a look here. Of course, you can't see what I'm doing because I forgot to click the button. Make sure that uh, these pins are all touching. I didn't touch this area, but if one of these legs isn't connected, that could be a problem. And again, it might just be one of those things that this needs a cleaning because there, there, there is gunk. I mean, look at this. There's probably that's corrosive gunk connecting the pins there. It looked just like that. Okay, so the jail bar pattern's not uh, checkerboard. My mistake. Okay, yeah, you, uh, you will benefit from a cleaning. I guarantee you on that because there, there is tons of gunk between some of these pins here. Um, but we have ruled out the capacitors now, so that's good. Uh, I'm not seeing any apparent signs of any trace damage. I'm going to check on the back of the board, which honestly I did not uh, look at yet. I usually work on the front, then turn to the back. All the capacitors seem to be there. There's some gunk here, but nothing too horrendous. I'm just going to check around the various chips on the board, make sure no pins are touching where they shouldn't. Sometimes these get squished together. Yeah, see, like this one is almost like that. It's almost touching. I'm just going to straighten that out there. Uh, this has some gunk there. But I don't think that might have been corrosive, actually. See, that's, that's just the problem with Get that out there. Uh, which solder ball was that? I believe I did get all of them off the board. But uh, that's another good reason why we need to clean this thing because there could be a solder ball under one of these connectors and it would be impossible for me to see. Usually when I get this pattern, I look at these chips here because these are right next to the capacitors and uh, you can see there are some solder balls here, just little little tiny ones. And you could also see there's a lot of gunk here that is likely corrosive. See, and it's likely bridging connections that it shouldn't be. So, you know, again, not going to go too crazy diagnosing this here because uh, likely uh, 
ending to this will be a dip in the ultrasonic cleaner. Which I am more than happy to do. <laughs> Jay missed it before when I was talking about solder balls. That's why Bruce claimed that I was talking junk about him. I was just saying, hey, look, Jay, a solder ball. It's my story. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, there's some gunk between these. Or I mean, I've I've also uh, seen when I've removed some of these chips, sometimes the the trace is just like this one. Like some of the pads underneath these are just like rotted. Uh, I'm gonna actually scrub this a little bit more. Does not hurt to try. It's not going to really get anything that's under the uh, the board, but or under those chips, rather. Sorry, it's late. Words are hard, etc. But it may clean up those things a bit more. Oh well, thank you very much, Ed, for the super sticker. I greatly appreciate it. Eep, and uh, that is a very, very motivational pair. I will keep it up. <laughs> oh, Jay. Ugh. I don't know which is worse, to be honest. Yeah, some of these chips don't look too hot either. I mean, just... Look at that, man. I mean, ugh. Not, uh, not a happy chip right there. I mean, those are the serial port chips. I don't believe they need to be 100% uh, functional for the system to turn on there, but... It's similar to the Macintosh LC. There's the just, you know, this little area of capacitors that is uh, a bit of a pain in the butt sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna dry this area and then we'll test it again. I will also test it without the memory modules. I don't think that's causing the problem. I would hope not, especially since they look stock, but you never know. I'm actually gonna take them off for a second so I could clean area underneath just look by this chip make sure nothing is touching anything no but this has the same symptom that uh, Kate's Macintosh did but uh, the board that she had actually had a pin that had broken off uh, from that that sensitive chip I was talking about before so hopefully this uh, does not 
have that same issue. Yeah, there's just... I mean, this is, this is likely corrosive gunk right here. It's probably bridging those two uh, pins. Not cool. This is why I'm on my like third or fourth box of these little cotton swabs Q-tips because <laughs> I keep going through them. And all 32 of you are still watching. My goodness. Sorry, Mike. This might go on for a bit more. Welcome to go to sleep. I guess I should turn the ultrasonic cleaner on now, huh? Should I get it warmed up? Should I get it warmed up? It's going to make an awful noise. If you thought the... Uh, if you thought the... The heat gun was making a lot of noise. That cleaner, man. It makes a different kind of annoying noise. Yeah, the, the Sims look factory to me, but thank you for confirming, yeah. Sorry, I'm doing some of this off camera. It's just easier for me to get closer to it. I'm going to do the same bit of scrubbing by this chip again. Sorry that some of the label is cut off here. Uh, I mean, wearing off, but there's... I mean, if it was in that condition, it was going to come off anyway during the cleaner process, so... Someone once asked me if I had a method of reprinting the text on those chips. And I said, I suppose I could do it with the label maker. And he's like, oh, it's not going to be factory. And I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> because I don't know how else to do that. I don't have a fancy device that does that. I have a label maker. I have a printer. That's as fancy as I get. Yeah, do you have a marker? <laughs> a marker would work. But uh, I do put all these disclaimers on my recapping site, which I assume someone is reading if they're sending it to me. And if somebody doesn't read it, I'm sorry, but the text is there and you click the button saying, oh, I've read this, blah, blah, blah. And if you actually haven't read it, well, that's not my fault. But, um,. 90% of the people I deal with are very pleasant. They understand the risks of uh, working on some of this older stuff. You know, labels may come off, etc. But uh, even though I joke around here, I take the utmost care with this type of stuff. But this stuff is old, it's vintage, and it can be very fragile, especially the plastics and stuff. So. You know, I, I usually set the worst expectations, being like, look, you know, things can melt a little bit, this could happen, this could happen. And, uh, uh I don't think I've had any actual complaints from anybody who's, uh, received a board that I've finished afterwards. They're very happy it's working. And, yeah, so, right, just, uh, a few more little areas to dry here. I know I'm being sort of... A little overprotective probably with some of these areas but I'm very curious okay all right so I think we are ready to try this again hand paint the letters <laughs> that was not included in the original price <laughs> I don't think my hands are that steady to be honest it would look like garbage be happy to print you out a label but uh... <laughs> all 
Okay, so same deal as before. I'm gonna grab that case. I will try with the memory first, then I could try without it. I don't believe these need PRAM batteries either, but uh, that would not necessarily cause the issue we're seeing, I don't believe. Okay. All right, let's give it a try again. See if we have any progress made. Nope, here the CRT engage, but uh, nope, same patterns. Damn. All right, I am going to remove the memory modules just in the very rare chance that it is that. I doubt it, but you never know. No, nope, same thing. All right, well, this looks like it is a very good candidate for a good ultrasonic bath. Put this back on the table here. If you guys want to wait while it's in the cleaner, it's not just the it's not just the 15 minutes of it in the cleaner. It is the 15 minutes for it, the water to warm up and then 15 minutes for me to put it in the cleaner. That's going to be a half hour. It's already 12:30 and it's getting to be 1 a.m. and I have work tomorrow, so I can't really do that. Um <sighs> Let's play trivia. Yeah, who has a trivial pursuit? Let's uh, break that out. Uh, but no, and then I have to, I can't just, I can't just test, no, I can't just test the board when it comes out. You know that, Jay. It's going to be dripping wet. I have to dry it and everything. So um, it, it's unfortunately going to be a bit of a, a process. So unfortunately, I cannot continue at this point uh, without putting in the cleaner. I am hopeful that once I put it in the cleaner, that will resolve the issue that we have. Uh, I will do one last thing, and that is to lift up uh, these ROM sims just to make sure actually no there's there's no there's unlike uh, other boards on this board there are no capacitors really near it there's just this one that is further away there but uh, I would like to uh, do some stuff offline I'd like to test the voltages and things like that uh, make sure everything is appropriate but um, three and a half hours yeah so um, yeah this will have to be continued unfortunately uh, there is also the corrosion of the serial ports, uh, and there's actually some corrosion around the uh, ports here. It's a little hard to see, but there is, is some on the metal shielding here. So it's very possible that there could be something other than the chips on the board that we're looking at that is making a connection that it shouldn't be making, um, especially because these two areas here are pretty corroded. Um, so I don't think it's the end of the world. I still have hope that uh, we will get some more life out of this board. Uh, I am not giving up, obviously. But there is only so much I could do right now. And unfortunately, it's not as sunny outside as it used to be with it being winter and all. So this will take much longer to dry. Um, I do have a hair dryer. Uh, that does help, but uh, yeah, that's going to take a while. And, and I don't have the energy to keep going at this pace. It's, it's, it's 12.30 now, so... But uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, sorry we couldn't get this uh, working right off the bat. Sometimes there are easy boards and sometimes uh, the boards take a little bit more uh, persuading to turn on. I'm just taking a glance at some of the traces. Again, they all look to be in pretty good shape. Uh, I think if there were any trace breaks, that would likely be under the chips uh, where we were seeing some of that gunk. So I don't think I would be seeing that with my naked eye, but uh, 
why do you have a hair dryer <laughs> for for my wife um and she got very mad when i brought it downstairs not very mad but she got a little upset that i brought it downstairs and left it down here for a day or so because she's like i went to take a shower two days in a row and i couldn't find the hair dryer i'm like oh i'm sorry i brought that downstairs and she's like okay you need to bring that back up here so i can use it <laughs> oh boy oh boy um yeah any questions about these computers or recapping in general um I will be releasing another video in my Quadra 800 challenge very soon. The plan was to hopefully video edit that today and get something out tomorrow, but that has not gone to the plan, and I will probably be doing something, uh, releasing that on Thursday on Patreon, maybe releasing it Friday to the public if I can keep to that schedule. But, um, yeah, that is uh, that's where we're at. But uh, the board does look in pretty good condition except for those few areas so i am fairly confident that we can get this working on them i believe uh we will be in hopefully a better situation uh once this gets out of the cleaner i'm going to remove these memory modules here and just put them back in this little baggie so everything is organized and we don't lose these yeah who doesn't like mackie yeah what's not to like come on come on take a bit of a drink of water here whoops good thing my soldering iron isn't on because my elbow just slapped it oh i know what i could do i could take a picture of this logic board with this camera because i have some uh potentially not working film that i have to use up and i'm not going to be taking pictures of family and friends and stuff because uh, I don't want it to uh, go to waste. So uh, let's uh, see. The flash is on auto. Let's put Mackie in here too. Let's make this an interesting picture. We'll have Mackie there. And uh, we'll clean up this area a little bit. Sorry, Adam, your board is being ph ph photographed. Ah. Let's see if this comes. I mean, I'm sure I'm, sure I'm well... Uh, with well outside of the um the focal range of this little lens but uh we'll see how this comes out if we ever develop this film uh oh i should get one of my mac 84 pins uh, i usually have them sitting around here i have one in this bag Not that we're doing macro photography or anything, but sure, I will, Adam. No worries. It might be a day or so to get uh, it all cleaned, but I will, uh, I will work on that. No worries. But thank you very much for your patience. The second he squeezes the foot, he could squeeze. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for giving her ideas. Okay, so you saw you saw it live. I took a photo. Who knows macro photography? Uh, I wonder how many exposures are in here. Is it uh, is it twenty four? Is it thirty six? Let's look up the type of film here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Might have to look up a roll of film on eBay just to uh, just to find how many exposures they are. Twenty-five exposures each. Okay, that's usually the standard for this film. Okay, see you, Ed. Thanks for stopping by. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go to bed too in a second. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty tired. So, uh, I appreciate everybody stopping by. I know uh, it's always nice when these things work, but uh, this one requires a little bit more uh, cleaning, and hopefully that is the only issue here with this. Now, um, I will likely be streaming sometime during the weekend, hopefully, uh, but I am working on editing those uh, Quadra videos. So, uh, that is going to be my priority, is to try and get that stuff done. 
because I would like to live stream about the Quadro stuff, but I need to get to a certain point in the video where you see what I've done to the machine before I can start live streaming it. But uh, yeah, that's about it. But as always, if you want to look at that stuff uh, before it's released publicly, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You get a lot of access to those stuff, the, those videos, uh, discounted t-shirt stuff and things like that. Really cool. And um, also you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. The handle there is Mac 84 TV. And if you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please consider doing so. But uh, that's it for today. So I hope you enjoyed the stream and I'm uh, going to be happy to update everybody on the progress of this board as we progress later on. But that's it for now. Have a good night. Good morning, wherever you are. Uh, stay safe and uh, stay warm. It's cold out there. At least where, where I am. It's probably it's probably very hot where Bruce is. But all right, that's it for now. <laughs> Take care, guys. See you later. And thanks for stopping by.